Hello, Word Nerds. Thank you for joining me today and every other day that you are listening to this. Today is December 26th. It is Kwanzaa. I think maybe Kwanzaa might be a multi-day thing, so this might be the first day of Kwanzaa. It is also Boxing Day, so all you British people are celebrating Boxing Day, which I have no idea what it is, but I've learned it in the past and I can't remember. Um, And it is also the fourth day of Halloween. No, what? Did I really just say that? It is the fourth night of Hanukkah. I saw the H-A in Hanukkah on my little post-it, and my brain just went to Halloween because it is our favorite holiday. Uh, So this might be a little bit short. I'm uh, I'm, I'm booting the last word on the page until the next episode. Uh, So yeah, let's get to it. Uh, Australoid is the first word. I guess technically this is related to uh, all the Australian words, um, but it's a little bit different. It is an adjective from 1864, and in uh, in italics it says in some classifications. So the definition is of or relating to a racial group including the Australian Aborigines and other peoples of Southern Asia and Pacific Islands. Australoid. I don't know if that's a disrespectful term these days, uh, so apologies if it is. Um, Australoid is also a noun. Next we have Australopith, uh, I do know this word, I will I will get it out, don't worry, but it is a complicated word, Australopithecine, A-U-S-T-R-A-L-O-P-I-T-H-E-C-I-N-E, Australopithecine, I would love to figure out what that is backwards, but I'm not going to do that right now, it is a noun from 1943, uh, if you're lucky, maybe I'll save that for the end of the episode, any of a genus of extinct southern and eastern African hominids that include gracile and robust forms with near-human dentition and a relatively small brain. Australopithecine is also an adjective. Uh, Gracile is spelled G-R-A-C-I-L-E. I I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. And uh, let's see, dentition, I'm assuming that's related to teeth. Uh, So near-human teeth and a relatively small brain. This is ultimately from Latin australis, from uh, plus the Greek pithikos, which means ape. So there you go. Next, we have Austrian pine. It is a noun from 1857, a tall European pine, widely cultivated for ornament and having needles in clusters of two. The European pine scientific name is Pinus nigra, uh, which I assume mean, means black in some form. Black, maybe the bark is very dark. Uh, oh, and there was also a scientific name in the last one, the genus for Australopithecine. The scientific name is Australopithecus. Next, we have Austroasiatic. Austroasiatic. It is one word. It is an adjective from 1922 of relating to or constituting a family of languages of South and Southeast Asia that includes Mon Khmer and Munda as subfamilies. I don't know what those are. They are spelled, uh, the first one is M-O-N hyphen K-H-M-E-R. And the other one is just M-U-N-D-A. Apologies if I mispronounced them, and I'm sure I did. Next we have... Austronesian. It is an adjective from 1925 of relating to or constituting a family of languages spoken in the area extending from Madagascar eastward through the Malay Peninsula and archipelago to Hawaii and Easter Island and including practically all the native languages of the Pacific Islands with the exception of the Australian and Papuan languages. Uh, So this is from the word Astronesia, which means islands of the Southern Pacific. Now we have a prefix. It is A-U-T or A-U-T-O. It is number one, self or same one, as in autism or autobiography. So that's interesting. The word autism, which we uh, will get to probably in the next episode, uh, next one or two episodes. Uh, so it's it's 
the prefix A-U-T means self or same one. So I'm, I'm really curious, just because autism is a thing I think about a lot about, and there's a lot of people who deal with that. Um, it is, um, I'm curious wha- where that word came from, uh, where, why they are connecting it to self or same one. What was the thought process behind the uh, creation of that word? Anyway, number two. Automatic or self-acting, as in autopilot. Next, we have autocoid, A-U-T-A-C-O-I-D. This is a noun from 1914. A physiologically active substance as serotonin, bradykinin, or angiotensin, produced by and acting within the body. I don't know if I pronounced those words correctly, but we are going to read the definition without the part in parentheses. A physiologically active substance produced by and acting within the body. Um, let's see. This is from out, the prefix out, plus the Greek akos, which means remedy. It is probably akin to the old Irish ICC, ik, which means cure. Now we are going to move on to Autarkic, autarkic, A-U-T-A-R-C-H-I-C. It is an adjective from 1883, and we have the synonym autarkic, A-U-T-A-R-K-I-C. Autarkical is an adjective. Now we've got autarky, autarky. It's a weird word. It's kind of like anarchy, but it's not spelled that way. Autarky. Uh, it is a noun from 1617, and we have the synonym autarky with a K-Y. Uh, ba-ba-boo. We have autarky again. Oh, the last one was form number one. Now we have form number two uh, spelled with the C-H-Y. This is a noun from 1665. Absolute sovereignty. Synonym is autocracy. Autark is also a noun, or is a noun. Now we have autarkic with the K-I-C. Uh, this is an adjective from 1936 of relating to or marked by autarky. And autarkical is an adjective. Autarky is next with a K-Y. Uh, I feel like I'm reading gibberish. Uh, this is a noun from 1657. One Synonyms are self-sufficiency and independence, specifically national economic self-sufficiently and independence. Number two, a policy of establishing a self-sufficient and independent national economy. I've definitely heard this word or uh, these, you know, these forms of words, but um, never really learned what they specifically meant. Autocrat, I think that would be related probably. Uh, all right, let's see. We are going to move on to autocology. Autocology. So it's the word ecology with A-U-T at the beginning. And I'm assuming if we go to the prefix aut or auto, um, one of those definitions, probably uh, the first one, self or same one, is uh, going to be connected to this. So autocology is a noun from 1910. Ecology, dealing with individual organisms or individual species of organisms. And aut-ecological is an adjective. Next we have auteur, A-U-T-E-U-R. I learned this word when I was in film school. It is a noun from 1967. One, a film director whose practice accords with the auteur theory. Broadly, we have the C definition for the word director. And don't worry, auteur theory is next. Number two, an artist as a musician or writer whose style and practice are distinctive. Auteurist is an adjective or a noun. This is French. It means originator or author. It is from Old French auteur, uh, which is from the Latin auctor, which I think we learned a while ago means author. And there's more at the word author. So now we have auteur theory. It is a noun from 1962. A view of filmmaking in which the director is considered the primary creative force in a motion picture. Uh, So that's what that is. 
that is in sometimes true, sometimes not true. I guess it depends on the director and depend depends on the film. Um, but in in terms of the word auteur in general, um, when somebody says he's an auteur or she's an auteur or they are an auteur, uh, that typically means that they just have a very specific style uh, that they keep on coming back to. So you can uh, look at a film and if if it fits with the director style, if you can figure out who the director is just by watching the film, if you didn't know who it was ahead of time, uh, they would probably be considered an auteur. Next and last word for this episode is auth, A-U-T-H. It is an abbreviation for one, authentic, two, author, or three, authorized. Uh, And just to give you a sneak peek, the next word, which will be the first episode of the next episode, is authentic. So, what is our word of the episode? Um, We got those, we got that. I'm going to pick auteur as the word of the episode uh, because, I don't know, I guess I just find that kind of interesting. There was a time when I wanted to be a film director. Maybe I still will. But I do want to be in the film world in some way. I think producing might be kind of fun. Maybe not so much writing. But anyway, uh, let's end this episode. Thank you for listening. Today is Boxing Day and Kwanzaa and the fourth night of Hanukkah. It's not the fourth day of Halloween. I don't know where that came from. I am still a little groggy from uh, getting over a cold or something and uh, some allergy medicine I took last night. So... We are almost in 2020. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Yay! That that voice, <laughs> it, it, this is a very special episode. That voice is my dad. Yay! After um, almost a year, uh, I finally got him to be a guest reader. Because I'm so busy. He's so busy. I'm so busy. <laughs> Life is so busy. Um... So, we are uh, in a, uh, a different space than I usually am, so it might sound a little bit more echoey than normal, but hey, deal with it. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to go through some words. Uh, we are actually recording this on Christmas Eve, uh, so just a few days before this episode is actually airing. And um, after this episode, you will probably wish that he is on every single episode because yeah, right. he's, he's going to sure. be much better. Sure, of course. Uh, All right, you ready? (laughs) I'm ready. Hello, word nerds. Uh, I am ready with the first word. Are we ready to go? Ready. The first word is authentic. It's an adjective from the 14th century. Then number one, OBS, which means obsolete, authoritative. How am I doing so far? Uh, Good. Uh, Authoritative, uh, just for the folks at home, that is a synonym for authentic because there is no actual definition. Ah. Number two, A, worthy of acceptance or belief as conforming to or based on fact, such as paints an authentic picture of our society. Uh, B, conforming to an original so as to reproduce essential features, such as an authentic reproduction of a colonial farmhouse. So this is an interesting word to have for today, Spencer, because this is kind of the end of the year, and we sort of take stock of our lives, and it's a good time to be authentic about that. Hmm? Perfect choice. Very good. And make sure to keep your mic nice and close to your mouth when you move your head. Okay, I move around too much. Okay. Mm, C, made or done the same way as an original, such as authentic Mexican fare. Three, not false or imitation. Real, actual. And real and actual are synonyms. synonyms. Anything in that lower caps are synonyms. As an authentic Cockney accent. Can you do an authentic Cockney accent for me? I say, mate, of course I can. I can't do it for too long now. I run out of steam. Maybe I should read the rest of it as a Cockney. (laughs) Uh, Maybe just the next one. Four, A, of a church mode. People won't understand what I'm saying. Ranging upward from the keynote, compare plagal or plagal, P-L-A-G-A-L. And uh, just to be a little bit more specific, that is the one definition for the word plagal or plagal. We don't know how to pronounce it. P-L-A-G-A-L. Nope. Go look it up. B, um, of a cadence. I'm back to English now. Of a cadence. Progressing from the dominant chord to the tonic. 
compare plagal to. Five, true to one's own personality, spirit, or character. Authentically is the adverb. Authenticity. Authenticity <laughs> is the noun. Um, I, I yeah. do that all the time, and I've commented on this before. When you have those other forms of the words, depending on how they've changed things, the emphasis on the syllable changes, yeah, and it gets very, very confusing. a different syllable. Exactly. Uh, synthetic. Authentic. S- the, uh, synonym. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> so so uh, we see this every once in a while. This is just a bunch of synonym information for the word authentic. Here we go. Authentic, genuine, bona fide, or bona fide, meaning being, being actually and exactly what is claimed. Authentic implies being fully trustworthy as according with facts, such as an authentic account of the perilous journey. It can also stress painstaking or faithful imitation of an original, such as an authentic reproduction, authentic Vietnamese cuisine. Genuine implies actual character not counterfeited, imitated, or adulterated. Genuine piety, for example. Genuine maple syrup. Should we say genuine or genuine? Either way. uh, Goes either way? Yeah. We haven't gotten to the G's yet. No. (laughs) That'll be in the next century. It also connotes definite origin from a source, such as a genuine Mark Twain autograph. Oh. Interesting. Bona fide or bona fide implies good faith and sincerity of intention, such as a bona fide offer for the stocks. And I never know how to pronounce that. You know, depending on the context, if you're being all fancy in Latin, you'd say bona fide, right? But usually we just say bona fide. And there is the, there, it can be a noun too. You are bona fides. It means something. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. That's the extent of my knowledge, sir. So that is it for the word authentic, and we are going to move on to authenticate. It's a transitive verb, and it's from 1651. To prove or serve to prove the authenticity of, such as authenticate a document. The synonym, see confirm. Authentication is the noun. Authenticator is the a noun as well. So our next word is author. It is a noun from the 14th century. One uh, A, one that originates or creates. The synonym is source, such as software authors uh, or film. It could be film authors too. The author of this crime is another example. B, cap. What is cap? That means cap. it's a in in this definition, author would be capitalized, so capital A. Oh, okay. Then God in the first uh, the first definition. Two, the writer of a literary work as a book. Uh, authorial is an adjective. So this is the second form of author. It's a transitive verb from 1596. To be the author of the synonym is write, and that's w r i t e, such as has authored several books. Authorless is a noun from 15th century, a woman or girl who is an author. Authorization, authorize, the British variation of authorization with a Z and authorize with a Z. Yep, and we see those all the time. Yeah. Uh, Authoritarian is an adjective from 1861. One, of, comma, relating to, comma, or favoring blind submission to authority, (laughs) as in had authoritarian parents. We don't have anything like that in our experience. Nope. Two, of relating to or favoring concentration of power in a leader or an elite not constitutionally responsible to the people. (laughs) That doesn't apply to anything in the news, does it? Such as... An authoritarian regime. Authoritarian is the noun. Authoritarianism is a noun. And the next word is authoritative. It's an adjective from 1605. 1A, having or proceeding from authority. Uh, The synonym is official, such as authoritative church doctrines. B, clearly accurate or knowledgeable, such as an authoritative critique. Two, dictatorial, uh, the second definition. 
Authoritatively is the adverb. Authoritativeness is the noun. And that is our last word. Yes, it was. And now I would like you to look back to the words that we just read, that you just read, and pick a word of the episode. You can use whatever criteria <laughs> you want. Any criteria. Well, I would take that this is the Christmas season. And what I said before about being authentic is um, if there is ever a time to kind of sit back and take stock of what's happened in the year before, what you'd like to have happen in the year to come, that it is good to be authentic with your thoughts. Are you kidding yourself about things? Are you being straightforward with uh, the people that you have in your life? So it's a good time to think about being authentic. I like that sentiment. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a good, you know, even though it's fairly arbitrary, the end of the year, you know, this is what we've lived with for our whole lives. And yeah, I think it's a good time to look back and see what changes you want to make, if you want to make any changes. And yeah, I, I like that. Well, I'm glad. Or otherwise, I had to re-record it. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, cool. Well, thank you very much for doing this. We'll. Uh, I'm going to talk with him off mic and see if he wants to do another episode. So uh, you Twist know, my arm. To, yeah, uh, you you may or may not hear him again <laughs> on tomorrow's episode. Woo-hoo. So thank you very much. Um, if you have any ideas, th- I'm looking at him and I'm also talking to you. If you have any ideas on a good sign off for me, since I've been saying the same thing over and over again, uh, please email me, send me a message. Uh, until next time, this is Spencer and sometimes other people like Jim reading the dictionary. Ooh. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of this podcast called The Dictionary. Thank you for joining us. Yet again, we have my dad, Jim. We, uh, oh, we're we still right. sitting here uh, reading this very tiny print in this book. Um, so, uh, yeah, you want to just get to it? Let's get to it. All right. There we go. The first word is authority. A-U-T-H-O-R-I-T-Y. It's a noun, and it's from the 13th century. Wow. Uh, 1A1, a citation, as from a book or file, used in defense or support. And then 1A2, the source from which the citation is drawn. 1B1, a conclusive statement or set of statements as an official decision of a court. Uh, Then 1B2 a decision taken as a precedent. 1B3, no. Yep, you got it. 1B3? Good job. 1B3, testimony. That's our synonym. Synonym. C, an individual cited or appealed to as an expert. 2A, a power to influence or command thought, opinion, or behavior. 2B, freedom granted by one in authority. And the synonym is... Since we're in the Christmas season, it's the synonym that's cinnamon. Right is the synonym. And that's R-I-G-H-T. Right. Correct. (laughs) 3A. Uh, Persons in command, specifically government. B, and this is 2B. 3B. 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 A governmental agency or corporation to administer a revenue-producing public enterprise. The tr- such as the transit authority. 4A, grounds, warrant. And those are those synonyms. Those are synonyms. Grounds, war- grounds, warrant, such as had excellent authority for believing the claim. 4B, convincing w- uh, force. Convincing force. Uh, uh, example would be lent authority to the performance. Synonym, see influence and power. And those are just two two more synonyms that they wanted to throw in there at the end uh, after all of those definitions. This was a very complicated word for a uh, newbie guest reader yeah. such as yourself. Yeah, that's tough. So you're welcome. <laughs> Author- authorization is the next word. It is a noun from the 15th century. One, the act of authorizing. Two, an instrument that authorizes. And the synonym would be sanction. The next word is authorize, and that's a transitive verb, uh, and the forms of it are authorized and authorizing. comes from the 14th century. 
Uh, one, to establish by or as if by authority. And the synonym would be sanction. A, customi- a custom authorized by time. Oh. And that's our example. That's our example. A custom authorized by time. Number two, to invest, especially with legal authority. And the synonym is empower, such as authorized to act for her husband. Three, and that's archaic, the synonym is justify, 1A, authorizer, which is a noun. The next word is authorized version. Oh, it's two words. We get two for one. Authorized version is a noun from 1814. It's a revision of the English Bishop's Bible carried out under James I, published in 1611 and widely used by Protestants, also called the King James Version. Were you named after uh, James I? He was named after me. Oh, yeah. The next word is authorship, and that's a noun from 1710. One, the profession of writing. Two, the source as the author of a piece of writing, music, or art. Number three, the state or act of writing, creating, or causing. The next word is autism, a word that we hear a lot. That's a noun from 1946, a variable developmental disorder that appears by age three and is characterized by impairment of the ability to form normal social relationships. I've felt that way at times. By impairment of the ability to communicate with others and by stereotyped behavior patterns. Autistic is an adjective or a noun. Autistically is an adverb. The next set of words is autism spectrum disorder. It's a noun first seen in 1992. Any of a group of developmental disorders, such as autism and Asperger's syndrome, marked by impairments in the ability to communicate and interact socially and by the presence of repetitive behaviors or restricted interests, also called autistic spectrum disorder or pervasive developmental disorder. And uh, we're going to take a little sidebar here um, uh, because I I did want to comment on uh, autism, autism spectrum disorder. I've been thinking about commenting on it for a while. Um, After watching the word, uh, the show, Atypical, uh, Mm -hmm. which I've, which we actually talked about a number of episodes ago, uh, I sort of realized that I feel like I'm slightly on the autism spectrum. Really? Um, uh, And uh, so... You know, I didn't plan to have you here for this episode, but I don't know how much or how much experience you have with people with autism. But the little bit that you know, uh, would you agree, disagree? How? What's your experience? You know, seeing me grow up, and you know, what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Uh, well, in high school, we had you tested, and you came out very strongly in some things, and. Not so strongly in others. And, and you know, for some backstory, the reason I was tested was because I had a lot of issues in, you know, in English classes, writing, reading and writing. Um, not that I couldn't read or write. It was just more of, um, it was difficult. It was, it was hard to comprehend what I was reading. And, you know, I wasn't a very good writer in terms of, you know, the, you know, the, the content of what I was writing. Uh, you know, so, yeah, there, there was definitely, it seemed like there was some sort of lag. Uh, maybe I had a learning disability or something like that. It was something that you just uh, never, um, I don't know if you do now, but at the time when you'd be reading a book in English and they would talk about the theme and it was like, it would just went over your head. Oh, it just, still, you could still does. not get a theme and, and putting it into words, putting it into sentences was like pulling teeth. But, sure. But, um, but do math in your head, that's a totally different story. Yeah, so, it w- very clear that I was much better at math and science than English. And but on the other hand, socially, I don't know anybody who's better. So if, well, if, if autism has to do with social interactions... I, I w- would agree and, agree and disagree. Um, I think, especially when I was younger... Uh, you know, this is this is a long sidebar and apologies, but you know, my 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 uh, my regular listeners are aware that I get off on tangents sometimes. Um, yeah, when I was younger, um, I think social cues was kind of a thing. Um, to this day, I'm not very good at small talk, m- meeting somebody for the first time. Um, 
you know, you, you obviously, because I live with this, you know, day to day, you don't, you don't have the same experience that I do. Um, but this is, especially after watching that show, Atypical, and I do strongly recommend everybody watch that. But after watching that, I realized I have a lot of those things that our main character in that show has. Um, really? Sometimes I could get very obsessive about things. Um, this, like I said, the social cues, things like that. Um, but I've also realized that whether it was conscious or not, I feel like I've very much learned to deal with it, almost grow out of certain things, which I think is pretty common. You know, as as people on the autism spectrum get older, you know, they they learn how to deal with it. Um, I know somebody who who was uh, uh, who has Asperger's, and when they were younger, they got bullied all the time. They had a lot of social cue problems, social dealing with people socially. But now, they're very outgoing. They've mm. understood mm. what it was going on in their brain, and they were able to, to deal with that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think this is a thing that a lot of people deal with, whether they're aware of it or not. Uh, and this has been a big thing that I've been thinking a lot about just in the last few years um, in my own personal life. Uh, so I don't know. That was just uh, well, that's a little bit. A, we could go on for another hour about this, right? We could, yeah. but we're not going to, at least not on mic. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, obviously we could look through my childhood and pull it apart. But I'm totally lost. Where are we? We go okay, to auto? So, yep. We're yep. going to do the first form of the word auto. Auto. And that is a noun uh, from 1899. And it mean, the synonym is automobile. The second form, auto, is an adjective from 1876. And it means the synonym is automatic. And then here's something that I don't understand. So this is a prefix because we see that little dash at the end of it. Oh. So it's auto again, but it is a prefix. And then it says... Auto body. Oh, auto anti... Oh, auto... <laughs> <laughs> it says, see the synonym aut, A-U-T, as a prefix. Um, so if we backtrack... Um, we read that uh, a couple episodes ago. Don't you remember? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't. If, if you are not aware of what I'm talking about, just go back uh, literally two episodes ago. Near the end of the episode, we had the prefix ought or auto. Um, and uh, yeah, I talked about that then. So we are going to move on to the next word. Which is auto antibody. It's a noun from 1905. It's an antibody active against a tissue constituent of the individual producing it. Ouch. Autobahn is a noun. Can you spell this one for us? A-U-T-O-B-A-H-N. Interestingly, uh, two blocks away, there was a used car lot, and it was called the Auto Barn, which is a play on Autobahn. Get it? From 1939, a German, Swiss, or Austrian expressway. And uh, we've been skipping most of the etymology uh, just because it makes our lives easier when I've got a new reader here. Um, But this is German. It is from the word auto plus the word Bahn, which means road. Uh, So it's the road for automobiles. There you go. Autobiography is the next word. It's a noun from 1797, the biography of a person narrated by himself or herself. A form of it is autobiographer. That's a a noun. And another form is autobiographical or autobiographic, which are adjectives. Autobiographically is an adverb. Hmm. The next word is autobus. It's a noun, uh, and the synonym is omnibus, first meaning. The next word is autocatalysis. (laughs) I think it is pronounced autocatalysis. The next word is autocatalysis. There you go. A noun uh, from 1891. uh, Catalysis. Catalysis. Don't you know that word? You're, you're a science guy. I was a uh, chemist in another life, but I don't know what the hell's going on here. Uh, catalysis of a reaction by one of its products. Uh, autocatalytic adjective is one form, and autocatalytically is an adverb. Did I do that right? I think you did. Autocatalytically. Say it 10 times really fast. Autocephalus. Autocephalus. 
is an adjective um, from 1845, independent of external and especially patriarchal authority. Patriarchal authority. Used especially of Eastern national churches. Another form is autocephaly. Cephaly. Autocephaly. I think, hey, I think you had it right. Autocephaly. Okay, that's a noun. Uh, auto. Touchton. Oh, well, now we have to look at the pronunciation guide for this one. Autochton. Autochton. I think that's how it's pronounced. Or a touch duns or a touch no duns. <laughs> uh, from 1579. Uh, one as a person, plant, or animal that has auto Oh, wow. Okay. Is, so A U T O C H T. H O N O U S. I have never uh, seen a word where it has a C H directly it, followed by a T H. So I think that would be pronounced autochthonous, autochthon, something like that. Dang. Um, and I just want to point out the in the etymology, um, there is more at the word humble. Somehow humble is related to autochthon or autochthon uh, <laughs> etymologically somehow. We have fun. Oh, look at the next word. Autochthonous. Yeah, so I think uh, autoch- autochthonous. Autochthonous. Adjective, 1893, number one. Uh, synonym is indigenous, native, such as an autochthonous people. Oh, huh, I said it. Two, formed or originating in the place where found, such as an autochthonous rock or... An autochthonous infection. And I think it's autochthonous. Okay. Autochthonously is the adverb. And our last word is autoclave. This is the first um, form. First form. And autoclave. A U T O C L A V E. It's a noun. It's from 1820. It's an apparatus in which special conditions, conditions as high or low pressure or temperature, can be established for a variety of applications, especially an, appla- an apparatus as for sterilizing using steam under high pressure. And we are going to move uh, the second form of autoclave into our next episode. So if you are super excited to hear that word's definition, you're just going to have to wait. Uh, Unless you are listening to this episode after a day or more after it is released. Uh, So what is your word of the episode? (laughs) Um... We, we had a, a good talk about autism, so that would have to be my choice. Yeah, because I probably a, would have picked that as well. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of things that it opens the door to in conversations. Yeah, it's a very complicated subject, uh, both you know, in somebody's day-to-day life who, who is on the autism spectrum or politically, obviously, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, what causes it. You know, nature versus nurture is a whole big ball of wax that there's no scientific anything. You can't predict anything about that. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's uh, who knows why things like that happen. Who knows why some people are more or less on that spectrum. Uh, and it is absolutely a spectrum, um, you know, just like a lot of things in life. I feel like I am way very far on one side of it, but I definitely feel like I am on it. Uh, and I think everybody is on it to some degree, mm. right? Um, mm. It's a very complicated thing. Uh, so, yeah. Well, word nerds, we get philosophical in this podcast. We very much do. Uh, I do tend to get a bit f- uh, philosophical and political and, uh, yeah. Uh, you, you regular listeners know what I'm talking about. Uh, any last comments for today's episode? I'd just like to say, and to all, a good night. You're a few days late, but I agree. Thank you for listening. Thank you for reading. Uh, and no until problem. next time, this is Spencer and Jim reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Thank you for joining us at the end of 2019. Ooh. We are almost, almost to the last day of the year. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, we, I have Jim here again, my dad. Thank you for reading. No problem. Uh, and uh, if you've listened to his other two episodes, uh, which again, if you haven't, go go back. They're and listen. hilarious. They are hilarious and philosophical. Um, but you uh, you will understand why I said that he uh, 
you'll probably want him on the podcast all the time because he's a much better speaker than I am. But I think I learned a lot in my almost 40 years growing up with him. That's not true. Uh, All right, let's go with the first word. First word is the second form of autoclave, which is a transitive verb from 1911, means to treat in an autoclave, right? Yep. The next word is autocorrelation, and that is a noun from 1933. The correlation between paired values of a function of a mathematical or statistical variable taken at usual constant intervals that indicates the degree of periodicity, 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 <laughs> periodicity. periodicity of the function. You don't hear that word very no. often. Uh, and I think that's usually, not U- usual. Usually. That's okay. Great. I'm going to move the dictionary a little bit closer so you can read it a little bit better. Thank you. Um, The next word is autocracy, and that's a noun from 1655. The number one definition is an authority or rule of an autocrat. Number two, a government in which one person possesses unlimited power. Number three, a community or state governed by autocracy. And if you want to know more about autocracy, keep on listening, because we're about to talk more about it. Uh, Because the next word is autocrat. Oh, It's a noun from 1800. The first meaning is a person, as a monarch, ruling with unlimited authority. Number two, one who has one who has indisputed influence or power. Or undisputed. (laughs) Either one. Either one. (laughs) I'm losing it here. Autocratic is an adjective from 1772. Uh, number one, of relating to or being an autocracy and the, uh, s- uh, the what's the word? Synonym. The synonym. <laughs> oh, I, I like syn- cinnamon. The cinnamon synonym is absolute, such as an autocratic government. Second meaning, characteristic uh, of or resembling an autocrat. Synonym is despotic, such as an autocratic ruler. Um, autocratically is the adverb. The next word is autocrine, and that is an adjective from 1980. 1980, really, that's recent. Mm -hmm. Of, relating to, promoted by, or being a substance secreted by a cell and acting on surface receptors of the same cell. And you can compare pericrine. Hmm. Autocrine and pericrine. Yeah, usually when they say compared to another word, they mean uh, it's it's probably an opposite. Ah, okay. Autocross is the next word, and that is a noun from 1957, an automobile gymkhana, and that's G-Y-M-K-H-A-N-A. And I have to give a shout out to the podcast, How Did This Get Made? Uh, because they talked about a movie called Gymkata, I think that was G Y M maybe K A T A. Um, so I'm guessing it's very similar to this word, Jim Kana. Um, but in that movie, it sounded very ridiculous. It was kind of like an action uh, superhero guy uh, who was very good at gymnastics. And so he would be in it. I never. I watched one clip. He would be in a town like in the Middle East somewhere, and there was just some random you know, pommel horse, and he was doing his gymnastics around the pommel horse, kicking people as they tried to get to him. It was, it looked ridiculous. <laughs> the next one is scaring me because it's got a thing at the end. Auto da fe, and the E in fe has a k over it. We call that an accent. Okay. Uh, and it is A-U-T-O hyphen D-A hyphen F-E. Auto da fe, noun... Uh, from 1697, it's the ceremony for pronouncing judgment uh, by the Inquisition, which was followed by the execution of sentence by secular authorities. You uh, broadly means the burning of a heretic. And uh, just looking at the etymology, this is uh, oh Portuguese, uh, and it literally means act of the faith. Icky, autodidact. And that's a noun from 1748, a self-taught person. Uh, autodidactic is the adjective. Autosius. Autosius. Uh, let's see. O- Otitius, actually. Otitius. Uh, Can you spell it? 
A-U-T-O-E-C-I-O-U-S. It's got toe in the middle of it. So that goes back to 1877. It's passing through all life stages on the same host, such as Atosius. Atosius. Atosius rusts. Atosiously. Atosiously is the adverb. Atosiasism. Atosism. It's fun to watch me squirm, right? You have no idea how much I squirm when I get to words like these. Uh, so I think that first one is auticiously. That's the adverb. And auticism. Auticism. Is, is the an, noun. Yep. I don't like that one. Let's move on. The next oh. one is autoerotic asphyxiation. All right. So you kids might need to uh, skip ahead. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, let's, you know, the, I've, I've had to read words uh, in this vein, so uh, let's read it. No, it's a noun from 1973. A state of asphyxia intentionally induced as by smothering or strangling oneself so as to heighten sexual arousal during masturbation. There you have it. The next one is related. It's autoeroticism. That is a noun from 1898. One, sexual feeling arising without known external stimulation. So it's all in the brain. Uh, which it is anyway, right? Two, sexual gratification obtains solely through stimulation by oneself or one's own body. Uh, autoerotic is the adjective. And uh, I've mentioned this in the past. I do not look at these words ahead of time. I, I just... We prefer to be surprised. Yes, we are very surprised. And uh, I got to say, I was a little surprised to see these here uh, while sitting next to my dad. Uh, <laughs> but we are going to move on to the next word. <laughs> Auto exposure is a noun from 1957. A camera system that automatically adjusts the exposure according to ambient lighting. And if you are a photographer or a film person, if you shoot video or photos, uh, you probably know this, uh, but my recommendation is do not use auto exposure, um, except in maybe very specific situations. Uh, auto anything really for photos and film, uh, not good. Except for auto eroticism. Auto, that's good. I'm okay with that. Uh, next one is autofocus. Uh, 1937, an automatic focusing system, as on a camera, uh, autofocus is the verb yeah, so the, VB. The, yeah, so it's a, the normal one is a noun, and it can also be a verb. Autofocus does come in handy. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Uh, autogamy. And I think this is going to be our last one. Okay, last word. Autogamy from 1877. Uh, the, the word is... So this is weird. Um, so there's a synonym uh, right at the start, self-fertilization. Um, and then it says as A. Pollination of a flower by its own pollen. B. Conjugation of two sister cells or sister nuclei of protozoans or fungi. Autogamous is the adjective, and that concludes our words for today. That is that. Um, related to fungi, I just saw a trailer for a documentary all about fungi. I think it's called Fantastic Fungi or something. Maybe I'll put a link in the episode description. They use a lot of time-lapse photography and interviews. It's beautiful. With, oh, my God. It's, it's incredibly beautiful, but also just fungi in general are way more fascinating than I ever realized. <laughs> I listened to an interview with um, a guy who's actually in the documentary, Paul Stamets, I think is his name. And he, oh, he's the main, he's the dude, the fun guy yeah. dude. And uh, I learned a lot about them and uh, yeah. they're, they're really amazing. Uh, so yeah, that is the last word of the episode. Um, what's what's your word? What's, what's the word that you pick for the word of the episode? Mm, tough choice. Uh, autoerotic, I think has got to be, um, I'll go with fungi. No, that wasn't in our. You got to pick an okay. A word. Okay, it's got to. We're not well, in the FCS. That was a word that we used in conversation. Does that doesn't count? <laughs> well, you could pick uh, autogamy, but. Um, um, okay. What I, th you... I think you should pick. Uh, where did it go? Um, uh, oh crap! Autodidact, self-taught person. Oh, I was thinking of a different word. Mm. Auto de fe is bad. I don't like that at all. Oh no, there it is. Autitious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question is, what does that mean? Do you remember? Nope. Passing through all life stages on the same host. Oh, yeah. 
There you go. Is that your word? That's my word. All right. That is the word of the episode. Thank you to my dad Spencer, for reading. you are a fun guy. I know it. <laughs> so are you. Uh, that is the episode. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and uh, what's today? Oh, we've still got a couple of days until New Year's Eve. I keep on looking at my little post-it notes. Uh, yeah, that's it. Tell your friends, tell your enemies to listen to this podcast. Uh, write reviews on whatever uh, platform you're listening to. Um, oh, I, I have a Google Voice number. I think I've mentioned this in the past. Call me. Uh, tell me your favorite word that starts with A. Tell me your favorite moment from this podcast. Tell me whatever you want. I'm trying to uh, get people to to leave me voicemails, tell me stories, whatever they want. You're looking for uh, engagement. That's engagement, yes. Yeah. Please engage me. Um, because yeah. when I finish the letter A... Uh, in the middle of January, I want to, after that, post an episode of your responses, your voicemails. Tell me what you think. Um, cool. Hopefully, I don't have to censor them too much. Uh, <laughs> oh, this was a relatively short episode. Good job. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, and goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. I have another special episode for you today because I have my cousin Ryan as my guest. Uh, he is my guinea pig because, uh, as my regular listeners know, well, usually when I have a guest on, they are the one who is actually reading. Um, but uh, I wanted to try something new. So I'm going to still read, but he's going to be here to uh, comment and ask questions and uh, just sort of be another voice here on the podcast. So, Ryan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's nice to be here. I'm glad that you thought I was a good person not qualified to read the dictionary. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very qualified to not read. Uh, so can you just tell us a little bit about who you are? Let's let's do a short little interview. Oh, wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. Um, my name is Ryan, and I come from Cincinnati, but I live in Boston. And uh, I'm an economist there with three children. So that's like one quarter economist and three quarters dad. <laughs> uh, so it, in many ways, very much kind of the opposite of me. Um, but we, we grew up, we're only like a year, a year or two apart, I think. Uh, exactly a year. Exactly a year. Yeah. Within we're born. Days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we grew up together. We didn't live near each other, but we saw each other once or twice a year. And uh, so uh, for a little background information, uh, my dad's side rents a house um, every sort of Christmas time and the whole family gets together and uh, we we just all hang out for a few days, and it's a lot of fun. So that's what we are doing right now. And I snagged him before breakfast uh, to to do an episode. So let's get into it. All right. Uh, so our first word is autogenous. A U T O G E N O U S. I have no idea if your uh, economist background is going to come into any of these words, but we'll find out. I haven't looked at these yet. Uh, all right. It uh, could also be autogenic. Uh, it is an adjective from 1826. Number one, produced independently of external influence or aid. And a synonym is endogenous, E-N-D-O. So uh, as an economist, actually, this word endogenous means a lot to us. Oh, um, and this couldn't have worked out more perfectly. It could not have worked out more, more well. But in fact, we have a very different interpretation of what endogenous means. So opposed here, to autogenous? Uh, opposed to autogenous. They oh. would not at all be synonyms in okay. my world. So autogenous is something that is completely self-generated, it sounds like, without any external influence. Okay. And yeah. for us, endogenous really is more or less synonym for an outcome. So there are causes and effects. Endogenous things are the effects, but there are causes for these things. And in this, this word right here, it seems to be that there's no cause. It's self-generated. Nothing caused it. It came, came only from internal forces. Right. Produced independently of external influence uh, or or aid. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, so anytime I come across these words that are in lower caps, uh, I've always said they're synonyms, um, which I think is usually the case. Sometimes if it um, if it seems to be the opposite, it'll say compare to, mm. and then it'll give the word, which it doesn't say here. Um, but yeah, maybe... Um, no, I'm sure that it's meant as a synonym. Okay, okay. I'm just... It, but not in your context. In my context, that, that endogenous word is is a really important word, and it means something rather different than they have in mind here. That's so interesting. Yeah. Uh, can you give us an example of something in your world that would be endogenous, or is that a little bit too complicated? I don't know. It's not so complicated. Any economic outcome would be endogenous. So the price of meat this year mm -hmm. would be endogenous, and it would be caused by many things, including perhaps the weather that affected farming. Sure, sure. So those would be the exogenous forces 
causing the price of meat, it wouldn't be autogenous, right? But endogenous. Nice. Yeah. I've, like I said, that couldn't have worked out more perfectly. This is very <laughs> random, uh, and so I'm very, I'm very grateful for that. And even if that's the only one that you have a connection to, <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Uh, all right, number two for autogenous, originating or derived from sources within the same individual, as in an autogenous graft. Number three, not requiring a meal of blood to produce eggs. Uh, a little bit different from our number one definition, uh, as in autogenous mosquitoes. Blech. Yeah. Uh, autogenous Li is an adverb, and autogeny is a noun. Uh, a little bit on the uh, etymology. Uh, it's from ought, the prefix ought plus gene or genes from Greek, which is born or produced. And there's more at the suffix gen. Good to move Excellent. on. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's see. This, I'm not sure. Ah. Uh, Autogyro. Yeah, I think that's how it's pronounced. Autogyro could be spelled A U T O G I R O or G Y R O. Uh, this is a noun from 1907. A rotary wing aircraft that employs a propeller for forward motion and a freely rotating rotor for lift. Do you know anything about planes? That sounds like a helicopter. Oh, I think you're probably right. Ro- rotary wing that employs. Yeah. I don't know anything about planes, Um, but no, that makes sense. I have uh, fond memories of um, our our grandpa, Grandpa Russ, giving us those little balsa wood planes, and sometimes they had the the rubber band. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I I was cleaning out my dad's basement just a few months ago, and we found a huge box with about 60 of these balsa wood planes in there from when I was a kid, but they were still working. Nice. And so I took my children out, and we've been flying balsa wood planes into the trees and leaving them behind and getting new ones. You know, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> there's there's definitely something to be said for the old technology that still works. You know, Absolutely. if there's no no electronics inside of it, it you can it, it'll still work or that's right make it work or something. Uh, all right, so this is um, oh, it is from Autogyro, uh, which is a trademark. All right, next we have autograft, G R A F T. Uh, this is a noun from 1881, a tissue or organ that is transplanted from one part to another of the same body. And autograft is also a transitive verb. And I have an autograft of bone in my right arm from my left hip. Whoa. I didn't know the word, but now I do. It, it was autografted. So was that when you broke your arm? I broke my arm playing baseball. I remember that. Yeah, and it was uh, not healing properly. And then eventually they went in and broke it again. And I'm, put I remember plate. seeing the scar. Yeah. I, was it over a couple of holidays? It was. You had a cast on once, and then you had another cast on later. It's possible. I I think the whole process took less than a year, but it took oh, okay. forever. I I I can't remember. I don't like to think about it so much. <laughs> <laughs> you still have a scar. I still have a scar. Yeah. But, so they yeah. took part of the bone from your hip. Yep. And put it in your arm. And put it in my arm. What were you doing when you were playing baseball that made this happen? Well, it was a rainy day, and I and I was just going for a fly ball from center field or right field, and the second baseman came out, and uh, neither one of us yelled loud enough or yelled, and uh, all of a sudden I looked down, and there was this guy come one inch away from me. I put out my arm to stop the collision head on, and uh, I saved our heads, but it cost the arm. Uh, probably better that way, right? <laughs> That's probably right. Not good that your arm broke, but save that head. Um I thought I had another question about that, but yeah, uh, well, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, obviously, but um, that sucks. It I've never out. broken a bone. Never broken a bone. No, I'm I'm gonna try and keep that you, track. You're not taking enough risk, I guess. <laughs> That's true. I'm not. <laughs> I've never played sports really. Um, all right, we are going to move on to autograph. This is probably one that a lot of you are familiar with. It is the first form of three. This is a noun from 1623. Something written or made with one's own hand. Uh, And then we have A, an original manuscript or work of art. B, a person's handwriting or handwritten signature. Autography is a noun. And let's look at some etymology real quick. Uh, It is from the Latin autographus, which means written with one's own hand, from the Greek autographos, which is from the aut prefix plus graphos, which means written, and there's more at the suffix graph. Uh, How's your autograph? Uh, it's very messy. Mine too. Yeah, totally illegible. I, I've sort of done that consciously. It's like autographs are supposed to be just sort of squiggles. So that's what I do. 
Uh, all right, now we have the number two, uh, or the second form of autograph. It is an adjective from circa 1676, being in the writer's own handwriting. Uh, and then colon, not copied or duplicated, as in an autograph letter. I think that's a, a form that I'm not uh, really yeah, familiar with. I didn't know about that one. Now we have the third and final form of autograph. It is a transitive verb from 1817. One, to write with one's own hand. Two, to write one's signature in or on, as in autograph a book. Yeah, that's the one. That's where I should have asked about your autograph. <laughs> uh, have you ever met any celebrities where you get an autograph from them? Uh, I think I've got a couple of baseball player autographs when mm-hmm. I was younger. George Foster comes to mind. I uh, have no idea who Member that is. of the Big Red Machine, 1970s uh, uh, baseball. Before my time, actually, but still legendary when oh, yeah. I was young. Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, not lately. Haven't met any celebrities. You got, you're busy with kids. Yeah. All right, next we have autographic. This is an adjective from 1807 of relating to or constituting. Is that the constituting? Yeah, it goes over the second line. Uh, or constituting an autograph. Autographically is an adverb. Now we have auto harp. It is all one word with a capital A. It is a trademark and it is used for a zither with button control dampers for selected strings. Zither is Z I T H E R. It'll be a long time before you get to that word. Whoa. Uh, I figured it out about 15 years <laughs> uh, if my math uh, comes out right. Uh, have you ever seen an auto harp or know what it is? I, I, it seems like I've heard of it, but I have no idea. You've probably yeah. heard the sound it makes, but maybe didn't realize. Yeah, I, I don't really have a lot of experience with that, but it's it's uh, what it says. Yeah. All right, next we have auto hypnosis. So it's hypnosis with the auto prefix. It is a noun from 1889, self-induced and usually automatic hypnosis. And auto hypnotic is an adjective. Have you ever been hypnotized? No, I haven't. I haven't either. I don't know if I want to. I'm a little afraid. Yeah, I'm a little suspicious that it's real. That too, yeah. Uh, all right, next we have autoimmune. It is an adjective from 1952 of relating to or caused by autoantibodies or T cells that attack molecules, cells, or tissues of the organism producing them. Not good. As uh, And then we have an example, autoimmune diseases. Uh, autoimmunity is a noun, and autoimmunization is also a noun. Uh, these, I think, are really common, uh, much more than people probably realize. Certainly, yes. In my extended family, I have several stories along these lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I know I, there are people in my wife's family who have um, a number of autoimmune diseases. I th- I, so I think it must be sort of genetic in some way, but there are so many of them. And um, it's it's really sucks that our body decides to attack itself. Yeah. And that's essentially what that is. Next, we have auto infection, all one word. It is a noun from 1879. Reinfection with larvae produced by parasitic worms already in the body. That sounds terrible. Awful. Next is auto intoxication. Uh, It is a noun from 1884, a state of being poisoned by toxic substances produced within the body. Ah, So you're not like drinking something uh, which is a toxic substance, substance, but it's your body creating something that is toxic. Uh, Do you even know what that would be? I've never heard of that. I can't quite see what that is. We uh, will have to ask the couple of nurses that are here to to, uh, find out what that is. Uh, All right, next we have autologous a-u-t-o-l-o-g-o-u-s it is an adjective from circa 1911 one derived from the same individual as in incubated lymphoid cells with autologous tumor cells and am i saying that word autologous yeah that is a fun example number two involving one individual as both donor and recipient as in an autologous blood transfusion also as in an autologous bone marrow transplant. So this is like an autograph. Was that an autograph? No, an auto... Oh, autograft with no, a an T at the end. Right. Yeah, yeah, they definitely seem related. It's just a different... It's tissue matter of different types. Yep. All tissue in the body. Yeah. All right. Next, we have autolysate. Autolysate. A-U-T-O-L-Y-S-A-T-E. Uh, could also be autolysate with a Z. It is a noun from 1906, a product of autolysis, which we are about to get to. Uh, but first we have to say aut- autolyze, 
with an L-Y-S-E is the British variation of auto lies with a Z. And here we go with autolysis. It is a noun from 1900. Breakdown of all or part of a cell or tissue by self-produced enzymes. Autolytic is an adjective. We are definitely in the world of body stuff. Yes, a lot of body doing things to itself. Right, exactly. That's that's that auto prefix. Uh, and here we go with auto lies. We had the British variation before. Uh, it is a verb from uh, 1903. Uh, first, we have the intransitive verb definition, which is to undergo autolysis. And then the transitive verb definition is to subject to autolysis. So in one case, you are making the autolysis happen. And the other case, the autolysis is happening to you. Uh, next, we have automaker, all one word. It is a noun from 1903, a manufacturer of automobiles. Do you not, have a... not too surprising about no. that one. I could have guessed that one. Yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite car brand? Do you care about cars? I don't care so much about cars, but I did buy a new car for the first time in my life, I guess, really. Nice. Whereas for me, the car, we bought a family car a while uh, back, yeah. but I bought a car. I really liked the new Mazda. That seemed like a great car. It was a little expensive, though, so I went with a Civic, and okay. it's fine. It, it, it gets I the job done. I can't imagine a more fine car <laughs> <laughs> in any dimension. Right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. It gets you from point A to point B. Hopefully not too much gas guzzling. Yeah, it's got, yeah so it has, uh, I, I upgraded to the turbo engine, which has more horsepower, and it's supposed to get better mileage. Oh, interesting. I thought you yeah. had to do that. A little faster, less gas. Yeah. But uh, but other than that, yeah, simple car. It's a car. It's a car. That's kind of how I view things. Uh, all right, let's see. We have Automat uh, with a capital A. It is a service mark. So not a trademark or a register mark, but a service mark. Used for a cafeteria in which food is obtained, especially from vending machines. I feel like this is kind of... It doesn't say what year it was coined, uh, but that seems kind of like an old word maybe our parents would be familiar with automat but what kind of vending machines were around back then i don't know that's a good question yeah when were Mm. vending machines invented now we need to know this that's interesting i'm guessing the 60s or 70s is maybe when this was from it's got to be the same time as tv dinners uh yeah probably all right next we have uh automate so it's like automat with an e at the end it is a verb from 1952 uh, transitive definitions are first. One, to operate by automation. And I know that I'm enunciating those weirds, words weirdly, uh, but I want to make sure that you understand them. Number two, to convert to largely automatic operation, as in automate a process. Uh, now we have the intransitive definition, to undergo automation. And auto, automatable, automatable is an adjective. I think we see this a lot uh, with technology these days. Yeah, and economists are are actually discussing automation a Mm. a whole lot in the last three or four years, asking all of these questions about whether we're going to be automated out of all of our work or not. Uh, And I have a lot of colleagues who think that this is a huge deal and the revolution is coming and we need a new society and stuff like that. And I tend to think, eh, it's just a little bit more of the same. We've had automation happening since uh, 1850 and world is managed so far yeah i i uh, this might not be a good example but the first thing i thought of was um meteorologists Mm. right there's a lot of automation computer models in being able to predict the weather but you still need that human to sort of interpret it and based on experience sort of predict where things are going to go so maybe that's sort of what you mean that that, yeah there's going to be more automation but the humans aren't not aren't going to be out of a job because they still need to do something. I think you're right. Yeah, I agree. And we have one more word for this episode. It is automated teller. Two separate words. It is a noun from 1972, and we just have the synonym ATM, uh, which we read a while ago. Automated teller machine, something like that. Ooh, which you know what? If we flip the page, let's take a look to 84. Uh, that is, you know what, let's just read that. Automated teller machine. It's a noun from 1973, and the synonym is ATM. So I figured those should go together. So I didn't tell... Oh, yeah, go ahead. We still have banks. We still have banks, right? You, you can go to an ATM and get your cash, but there, you still sometimes got to talk to a person. Yeah. Um, so I didn't tell you this beforehand, but I want you to pick a word of the episode. So of all the words that we read, 
using whatever criteria you want, what would be your favorite one? Actually, I think this automation or... Uh, yeah, we had automate. Automate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the verb version of automation, I right. guess. Because I think uh, automation yeah. is going to be coming maybe in the next episode. Uh, right, okay. So I think automate, it's a pretty big word. It is. It and is. a big idea. Especially these days with technology and more things can be automated, but whether do you want to automate things or not yep. and looking at people's jobs. So that is going to be the word of the episode. Thank you very much to Ryan for uh, being my guest reader, being my ki- guinea pig on this uh, new form, which I actually I think worked really well. Uh, we can have a conversation about the words. Excellent. Thanks, and, Spencer. Uh, until next time, this is Spencer and Ryan reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Bye. Hello, word nerds. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Today is New Year's Eve, so happy New Year's Eve to you. I have another guest for you. Uh, This is mere two hours after recording yesterday's episode with Ryan, and I now have his brother, Andrew, sitting in front of me. Say hello, Andrew. Hello. Happy happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve. It is the end of 2019, and uh, it's so weird. We're getting into 2020. It's It blows my mind. Likewise. Uh, all right. Uh, can you tell the people a little bit about who you are? What What do we need to know about you? Oh, boy. Um, well, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, I farm, uh, I'm currently a farm manager on a five-acre organic orchard. And I live in a collective um, eco-village community that is sort of getting started. We're almost 10 years into a project there where um where i live now and we're just getting just getting our you know, um, housing settled and people are starting to move into the landscape because you live there too yeah so some hopefully 2020 and the decade that follows will be kind of fruition for a lot of the projects i've been working on for the last 10 years fruition for your fruits word uh is there like a website or something that people can go to to learn more about yeah that? we're our group is wild and radish and our website is wild and and um i also the organization the nonprofit organization i work for every day is called planting justice and we're online at plantingjustice.org and is that where you go into uh, like food desert schools or prisons and and sort of help get them to grow food Something is that the simple explanation? Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty quick summary. Yeah, we uh, check out our website. There's a lot to lot to say. Um, sure. When we just in the last couple of years, we've started working um, towards getting indigenous folks uh, back to access to lands that historically were theirs. Nice. So you're doing a lot of really good work that. People should learn about and help you out. (laughs) Thanks. Um, All right. So let's start with our first word of today. Uh, It is the word automatic, A-U-T-O-M-A-T-I-C. It is the first form. Um, It is an adjective from 1748, 1A, largely or wholly involuntary, especially the synonym. uh, This would be the number five definition for the word reflex. So when we get to that word, the number five definition would be a synonym for what we just read. And we have an example, uh, automatic blinking of the eyelids. You have anything to say about the word automatic? We have more definitions, so (laughs) we can come back to that. It's a good word. I like that word. Uh, Let's see. It's automatic. It is very automatic. 1B, acting or done spontaneously or unconsciously. 1C, Done or produced as if by machine. A synonym for that is mechanical. And an example is the answers were automatic. Number two, having a self-acting or self-regulating mechanism, as in an automatic transmission. Uh, what what kind of car do you drive? Is it automatic or manual? I drive a 1987 Toyota pickup, and it is a five-speed manual. Uh, I, I give you much respect because I never learned how to drive manual. I've, I'm, I've been all automatic my whole life. <laughs> I, I should learn. I tried to learn once and I got too frustrated. So the I thing is, after just a few days, your manual transmission, your body makes it automatic. Oh, no. nice. <laughs> it's reflexive. It becomes automatic in your body, not in the car. Uh, all right. Number three is of a firearm. Uh, And the definition is firing repeatedly until the trigger is released. And then a synonym for all definitions is the word spontaneous. Automatically is an adverb and automaticity is a noun. Uh, Let's look at some etymology. It is from the Greek automatos, which means self-acting. 
Um, and there's more at the word mind, M-I-N-D. Now we have the second form of automatic. It is a noun from 1897. One, a machine or apparatus that operates automatically as A, an automatic firearm, B, an automatic transmission, uh, two, a semiotic firearm, and number three, we have the synonym audible. So just to remind you, this is the noun form of automatic, and the previous form was an adjective. So that's why they were separated out that way. Audible? Um, uh, yeah, audible. Uh, audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E oh. is the synonym for uh, that form of automatic. Uh, and we read that one a while ago. So if you want to mm. go hear about audible, go find it. <laughs> uh, now we have automatic pilot. This is two words. It is a noun from 1915. One, uh, we have the number one definition for the word autopilot, which we will be getting to... Um, it looks like in tomorrow's episode. Yep, tomorrow's episode. Stand by for that. Uh, number two, for automatic pilot, a state or condition in which activity or behavior is regulated automatically in a predetermined or instinctive manner, as in doing his job on automatic pilot. I feel like I I definitely get onto automatic pilot sometimes where I'm not even really aware of what I'm doing. Like if I'm driving the same road over and over again, it's at a certain point you just do it on automatic pilot. Absolutely. With and your... then forget about the stop you were supposed to make. Right. Oh, did I stop there? I don't even know. Autopilot. Nobody says automatic pilot. Right, exactly. Auto autopilot is definitely the way I would say that. Um, all right, next we have automatic teller. Uh, it is a noun from 1971, and we have the synonym hmm. ATM. And this is interesting because at the end of the last episode, last episode we had automated teller, uh, which had the same synonym, but this is automatic teller. And then next we have automatic teller machine. Again, in the last episode we had automated teller machine. So I guess both are totally fine. Uh, and that is a noun from 1977, and again we have the synonym ATM. Have you ever noticed how people say ATM machine? Yes, it's I hate that. That's frustrating. And I, obviously, if you're not aware, you're saying automatic teller machine machine. Another one that I like is uh, chai tea, because chai is tea. the word for tea, right? So you're <laughs> saying tea tea. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of other good examples of that, too. Uh, all right, next we have automatic writing, as in you're writing with your hand. Uh, this is a noun from 1855. Writing produced without conscious intention as as if of telepathic or spiritualistic origin. Have you ever done any automatic writing like that? No. Me neither. Next, we have automation. This is a noun from 1912. One, the technique of making an apparatus, a process, or a system operate automatically. Number two, the state of being operated automatically. Three, Automatically controlled operation of an apparatus, process, or system by mechanical or electronic devices that take the place of human labor. <gasps> right. So, well, you you work on a farm. There's obviously a lot of human labor. Do you use anything uh, to automate processes? Mm, we have a automatic irrigation system. Okay. Uh, that you know, we set a timer and um, schedule for. For watering for different parts of the orchard, um, but that's it. That's it. And I, at least, <clears throat> I know automatic and automated farms are uh, are coming, and probably will be something that develops over the next few decades. But I, I don't think it's the first place we're gonna see humans displaced from the workforce. Mm -hmm. it's, there's just a lot of variables in farming, and that makes it hard to automate. Yeah, it does seem like the irrigation, that's a good one to automate because mm -hmm. the, the timing has, for certain uh, different plants and things needs to be kind of specific. Sometimes maybe you have things go overnight when people are sleeping. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that seems like a good one. But in general, yeah, it's you still need that human labor. Uh, and we talked about automation a little bit with Ryan as well um, because mm. he comes from the... Uh, uh, what's the word? Economist. Economist. Yeah, the economy side. Um, and he said that some people are thinking that automation will get rid of some of the jobs but there's an argument for well maybe it will um it will help but you still need the humans to do a lot of the work oh and yeah i don't know anything about that world yeah i don't know that much either but <clears throat> since we're on it 
I think it would lead to more programming and uh, supervision, supervisory roles, Mm -hmm. and um, what are classically called uh, highly skilled labor, and reduce the amount of so-called unskilled jobs. Right, right. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about automation in general. We're not going to obviously delve too (laughs) deeply into that today. Um, But yeah, it's a it's a big topic that um, you know there's there are pros and cons to that. All right, we are going to move on to automatic. Let's see, I have trouble pronouncing these sometimes. Automatism. Yeah. Mm. Automatism. A U T O M A T I S M. Uh, This is a noun from 1776. 1A, the quality or state of being automatic. 1B, an automatic action. 2, the moving or functioning as of an organ, tissue, or a body part without conscience, conscious control that occurs either independently of external stimuli, as in the beating of the heart, or under the influence of external stimuli, as in pupil dilation. That was a really long definition. Um, yes, it was. This, uh, I remember in science class, maybe seventh or eighth grade, uh, our teacher asked us to come up with things that happen in the body that uh, you have control over or that happen automatically. And I remember there was a little bit of a discussion about breathing because breathing can be both. It can happen automatically, which it usually does. You're not even aware that it's happening, but you can also take control over it and breathe, take a breath in, take a breath out. Uh, That seems like one of the few, few bodily functions that you can very consciously control. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just was reminded of that as mm-hmm. reading that definition. I think heartbeat too. Some people have mm-hmm. have been able to practice that and you know get their heartbeat to go up or down a bit. Sure. You know, I think it said 1776. Yeah. That's the year of... The, the, the of, first usage in English, American English. Yeah. And it's the year of uh, American Declaration of Independence. And I think there's some self-determination wrapped up in the inclusion of that word in this dictionary. Yeah, you think there's some connection there? I think so. Uh, Well, let's see what number three says. A theory that views the body as a machine and consciousness as a non-controlling adjunct of the body. Interesting. Number four, again, we're talking about the word automatism. Number four, suspension of the conscious mind to release subconscious images. And we have an example. Um, it says automatism, the surrealist trend towards spontaneity and intuition. And that is a quote from, uh, I'm guessing, is this the magazine L E L L E? Uh, I don't know what else L would be. Uh, but yeah, that is the example. Uh, automatist is a noun or an adjective. Um, and, uh, we're going to skip the etymology. Next we have automatize. Uh, we are, we've been in the auto world for a while. Uh, so apologies if some of these are not as interesting as the others. Uh, this is a transitive verb from 1910. To make an action reflexive. And actually, an action is in parentheses. So the actual definition is to make reflexive. Uh, and it's an example would be an action could be reflexive. Automatization is a noun. Next, and I think this is going to be our last word, uh, automaton. A U T O M A T O N. It is a good one. Uh, this is a noun from 1611. Uh, number one, a mechanism that is relatively self operating, especially we have the synonym robot, or as some people like to say, robot. Number two, a machine or control mechanism designed to follow automatically a predetermined sequence of operations or respond to encoded instructions. And number three, an individual who acts in a mechanical fashion. Do you have any connection to automatons? Oh, sometimes I feel like one doing my work. Yeah. We- weeding row after row. The same thing same over thing. and over. Yep, yep. Mm. You, um, what was I going to say? I don't remember. This this is a, a seems like a very old word for the word robot. Like we, That's what they used to be called. I remember seeing movies that take place in maybe the 1920s or something, and they had things, and they called them automatons. Hmm. Uh, and then somehow the word robot took over. Was that Isaac Asimov who coined the word robot? I have no idea. I feel like it might have been. I don't know. He had, and he had the three rules of robots. 
Google it. Google. Uh, well, we're not going to get to the word robot for a long, long time. Um, <laughs> but, uh, 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 Andrew, what would be your word of the episode? Were you paying attention? Um, I was paying attention, yeah, most of, most of the time. Do you want to look through them? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with automatic pilot. Automatic pilot, or as some people like to say, autopilot. Uh, if you want, we can record the second episode, or you can be on the next episode, so we can actually say the word autopilot. But we are going to end this episode there. Um, automatic pilot is the word of the episode. Um, today is December 31st, 2019. We've, we made it through another year. Um, a, an albeit, um, what is the word I'm thinking of? Uh, we totally make up when the year starts and when the year ends. Arbitrary. You know? it, arbitrary. That's what I was looking for. It's very arbitrary, um, but we've. that's what we live with. Uh, this is when the new year comes, and we are about to start 2020, which I'm hoping is a very good year for all of you and me Woo! and you, Happy Andrew. New Year. Happy New Year. I feel like I should have some, uh, what are those called? The, the noisemakers. Mm, we can edit that maybe, in later. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I'll add those in. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I've um, mentioned this only a couple of times. I have a Google Voice number. I would love it if you could call and leave a message and tell me your favorite word that uh, starts with the letter A, your favorite moment of the last year of my podcast, uh, and I will edit your voicemails together in a uh, an episode after we're done with the letter A, sometime in late January maybe. Uh, I haven't gotten any calls yet, but maybe I'll get one. Uh, maybe I'll call myself. Uh, All right, that's it. Thank you and goodbye. Bye-bye. Hello, Word Nerds. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, I have another guest. Uh, If you haven't figured out the pattern here, I I mentioned a couple episodes ago, I am spending the weekend with my family, and so I am uh, trying to record with as many of them as possible to be my guests. Uh, So you've heard of Ryan, you've heard Andrew, and now you are hearing Mark. This is actually the second time that you've heard Mark. He was a guest reader on a previous episode. Um, Mark, I don't know if we really went through this, but can you just tell a little bit about yourself to the people? Or I could restate that as saying, can you tell the people a little bit about yourself? (laughs) Sure, sure, sure. I'm an American Caucasian male in my 50s. Uh, I am uh, involved in a loving relationship with your sister. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned before, but Mark is my brother-in-law. Right. Well, brother-in-law. You know, we're Uh, not not technically... Well, we're not legally married. There's no legal, so so yeah, it's easy right. for you to just. I asked her. I asked her. She oh. said, "No, I don't. I don't. I never really dreamed about weddings. I never really wanted a wedding. It's not a big deal." But I asked her about every four months just to be, see if she changed sure? her mind. I don't want to deny her anything that she wants. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. But anyway, good for you. Good yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> but she's not legally obligated to pay any of my bills. You take care of all of them. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah. That way, you know. She's not tied to me financially. Mistakes that I've made are not hers. That kind of thing. That's useful. Yeah, it's useful. Um, and so, what is your? Well, I, I'll just tell the people you you are a musician. You've been a mm-hmm. musician for a long time. Yes. Uh, is there a place that people can go to listen to your music? No, there isn't. I should fix that. Yeah. Right. Let's this do is that. this is my largest on online presence with your podcast. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Yeah. This is amazing. Well, you did. I know you did make some um, animations to some of your music. Are those still on YouTube, oh, or did yeah, you no, get rid no. of those? They're on uh, Vimeo. Vimeo. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to put a link to those so uh, people can find them. Thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> did you forgot? What well, you I, did? I, yeah, it was a weird time period in my life, and um, I, I actually don't remember the email address. Uh, the password, the username, nothing. Well, I can't get on that thing anymore. Luckily, you don't need that for people to watch them. We just need to be able to find them, and then we'll give them their give them the link. But I have to say, the amount of work that he put into these oh. these animations was insane. I mean, animation is crazy in general, but it was a lot of finding images, photoshopping them out, frame by frame creation mm-hmm. of things. I mean, it, a lot of work was put into them. And yeah, a uh, year. It takes like a year to yeah. do four minutes. I got a lot of appreciation for people who do that stuff. Oh yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. Well, and you were you're just an animator, one person. so you know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Animation is crazy. Uh, we're a little past animation um, in this book <laughs> called The Dictionary. We're not in the ANs. We are in the AUs. Right. Uh, and our first word for this episode is automobile. Mm. Uh, A-U-T-O-M-O-B-I-L-E. It is the first form. It is an adjective. So this is not the noun. This is the adjective or ac- adjectival form uh, from 1876. And we just have the synonym automotive. Uh, which we will be seeing in the future. Uh, and it is French. It is from the prefix aut plus the word mobile. Uh, now we have the second form of automobile. It is a noun from 1881. A usually four-wheeled automotive vehicle designed for passenger transportation. Automobile can also be an intransitive verb. An automobilist uh, or automobilist is a noun. Uh, do you have an automobile? Yes, our family maintains, uh, we are a single, single car family. It's fantastic. Little Honda. It, it helps to have an automobile. It I, does I, help to I feel like I drive a little too much uh, given, you know, with climate change and the amount of gas mm. that I'm putting into the world, I definitely drive too much. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I walk as much as I can. So I'm assuming you're going to get to synonyms here? Uh, well, when it tells me one. Oh, okay, because car, you know, is <laughs> yeah. just the big word. And I, automobile... Seems to have a very specific usage. Yeah, you don't usually hear people say automobile. Yeah, it's like we've just car. Right. Say, right. I am a little surprised that they didn't put that in here. Uh, but maybe automobile is a normal enough word that they didn't feel like they had to. Right. I don't know. Right. There, are, I, I've had issues with this book. Uh, like, why? Why would you do you have that? Issues why would, yeah. With the I, dictionary. I got issues. Okay. I got issues. Right on. <laughs> I've I've expressed my <laughs> grievances. Okay. Uh, All right, we are going to move on to automobility. Mm -hmm. This is a noun from 1896. The use of automobiles as the major means of transportation. And I think that's, uh, at least here in America, that's definitely the main, the major means of transportation. Next, we have automorphism. This looks like a fun one. Yeah, I like that. Uh, It is a noun from 1862. An isomorphism, I don't know what that is, of a set uh, with itself. And then in parentheses, it says as a group. So the entire definition says an isomorphism of a set as a group with itself. Do you have any idea what that means? Well, isometric, right? Iso is a is a common prefix. Prefix, yes. So and then isometric is an exercise generally where you uh, use your body against your body. I think so, but this is so, the isomorphism. So, so, so I have no idea. We, okay, okay. So you morph the morph morphs with its morphousness. That's what I was going to say. Say, sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. It seems like a logical conclusion. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, when we get to the eyes, we'll figure out what that is. <laughs> uh, all right, next we have automotive with mm. a V-E at the end. This is an adjective from 1852. Number one, we just have the synonym self-propelled. Number two, of relating to or concerned with self-propelled vehicles or machines. Detroit. Yeah. Right, that's, that's automotive, the, right. For sure, that's yeah. the capital of the auto world. See, we don't say car capital, but that would be uh, alliteration, which you think would be cute, but for some reason they call it odd automotive capital. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Interesting. Sorry, yeah. The English language, I mean, language in general, obviously, is fascinating, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this, because I, I think it's interesting, and I'm learning a lot. Should we figure out, like, what other, because if they took that from the French, should we figure out what other languages, what their word is for car? Well, I know uh, in one of the episodes recently with my dad, uh, Autobahn came up, um, you know, the the freeway in Germany. in Germany, right? Yeah. But that's a French to them? They they have adopted a French word for their highway system? Well, let's go back and let's look. Where was that word? I don't mean to get side... No, no, no. That's what this is all about. We get on change lanes. I don't mean to change Um, lanes. All right. So it it says, uh, when I'm looking back at Autobahn, auto is German. So I, I think this really goes back to Latin. Because those both related well, to Latin. I was curious about that because I know you call the Romance languages, which would be Italian, Spanish, and French. But then be- you get to the Germanic languages, and they're just like, oh, ach, ach, well, ach, they don't, right? But there's still, there's still, I know some base in Latin. They're the Romance languages because they're based in Latin, and there, there is some connection with German to Latin, not exclusively, not as much okay. as right Spanish and Italian and, and French, mm-hmm. but there is some connection there. Um, English too, right? English is 
it stems from German, those, right? but also from German, right? Okay. There's some clear connections. Kindergarten, right? We have that yeah, word. That's very sure. German. We love that word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm just looking, I'm trying to look at the prefix aut or auto, and it sends me to the prefix aut. And uh, apologies to all you people, uh, but that uh, comes from Greek, actually. Autos, oh, okay. A U T O S, which means same or self. Uh, self. Yeah, so that's okay. that's where that comes from hmm. originally, supposedly. I'm fascinated. This is great. It is great. Yeah. Uh, all right, we are going to move on to autonomic. Mm. This is an adjective from 1888. Do you want to take a guess at what this means, or should I just tell you? Uh, I'm going to guess after you tell me. Okay. Uh, number one, acting or occurring involuntarily, as in autonomic reflexes. Uh, number two, relating to, affecting, or controlled by the aut- autonomic nervous system or its effects or activity. An example is autonomic drugs. Autonomic Lee is an adverb, and uh, there's no etymology for me to talk about this one. So, so this is my heart and lungs, your respiration and your pulmonation. I don't know. I just ma- could have made that up. So auto- so automatic. Aut- and then the other thing is like when you hit your knee with a rubber hammer and your leg jumps out, that's going to be in Aut- that autonomic. Autonomic. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, the, yeah the nervous system in the body is crazy, but it, and it, yeah it does things on its own that on you own. don't have conscious control right. of. Unless of course sleep apnea kicks in. I don't know much about. You sleep would stop apnea, breathing but, while you were. Yeah, asleep. that's not good. That <clears throat> it's bad. Yeah, we actually yeah. talked a little bit about that in the last episode with Andrew because mm-hmm. we're obviously in this whole auto, mation mm-hmm. whatever world, oh. and uh, yeah, br- breathing came up as a as a thing that you can you can control it, but it's also something that happens uh, without your control in your body. <laughs> Crazy world. All right, now we have. Oh, this is related. Autonomic nervous system. Three oh. words. Uh, it is a noun from 1898. A part of the vertebrate, ver- vertebrate. N- let me try that again. A part of the vertebrate nervous system that uh, innervates smooth and cardiac muscle and glandular tissues and governs involuntary actions as secretion and peristalsis, and that consists of the sympathetic nervous system and the parasy- parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I like uh, so my endocrine system, it just squirts out stuff. I'm not like digest my food, right? My body right. just does that. Yeah. That's it's the thing. Okay, All right. And it's interesting because I, I don't remember where I was hearing about this, but the argument was something about you have very little control over what actually happens with your body and with your life <laughs> because there the majority of what's happening inside your body is completely automatic right uh from all all parts right Mm -hmm. and so there's actually very little that you have mental control over uh which i think is just fascinating oh it's totally fascinating yeah yeah your your digestion what happens when you breathe in it takes in i don't know it's Mm -hmm. just uh yeah it's it's mind-boggling and there are a lot of words in there that i have no idea in nervous innervate Oh, innervates. Yeah, that's okay. to go, to, yes, to run, to to it, right. Uh, a part of the vertebrate nervous system that innervates smooth and cardiac muscle, et cetera, et cetera. You've okay. seen that body magic thing, right? That's just the nervous system? Oh, oh, where, where they, they, they take out the nerves. The yep, yep, at the uh, that incredible. body exhibit at the Museum of Science and Industry. Right. Yeah, they took out all the nerves of the body. And I've, yeah, I've seen other pictures, too, mm-hmm. and it's like... They it, did a horse. They, yeah, well, that was... Oh, that was the muscles. Uh, yeah, it was the muscles and the mm-hmm. bones and all that. Yeah, that was a very fascinating but disgusting exhibit. Yes. Did you... I thought it was interesting is that uh, they kept having these little plaques that said the reason this person's lungs are black is due to smoking. And I feel like everyone in there was a heavy smoker that they plasticized. And then I thought, well, you know, maybe... Smoking has benefited society on some level. Because we get to see, see what happens. Right, they die faster or something and then donate their bodies to yeah. science. Well, there was, I think that exhibit actually got a lot of flack because I think that they were taking, some of the people might have been prisoners Ooh. who maybe didn't actually give permission to use their bodies or something like that. It wasn't everybody. 
Sure. Because uh, I know that there were a lot of older people who had donated their bodies. Because I remember seeing a lot of you know metal hips and joints and yes. things like that. Uh, yeah, and the lungs. Did they have a pregnant lady with the baby inside? There that one been. was, I think, that that really stirred people up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was it was interesting, but there was it was weird. It was weird, right? Yeah. I was conflicted. Exactly. Yes, mm-hmm. I think that is an appropriate response for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So we just read autonomic nervous system. We are going to move on to autonomist. Mm. A u t o n o m i s t. It is a noun from 1819. One who advocates autonomy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sure. Uh, we yeah we'll be getting to autonomy in mere moments. Sounds political. Uh, yeah, it can be. Uh, but first, we have autonomous. Uh, this is an adjective. This is uh, there's a number of definitions, so it's a little bit long. Uh, it's an adjective from 1799. One of relating to or marked by autonomy. To a having the right or power of self-government. To b undertaken or carried on without outside control, and a synonym is self-contained, as in an autonomous school system. 3a, existing or capable of existing independently, as in an autonomous zooid, z-o-o-i-d. Do you know what a zooid is? I'm going to say that I don't have any idea what that is. It's like uh, a silly, is it noid? N- N- uh, N- N- Z-O-O-I-D. Oh, no, no, no idea. Yeah, I, I'm guessing it's related. It's an animal of some kind, but I have no idea what a zooid is. Uh, that's going to be one of the last words that we read in the dictionary. Okay. 3B. Respond- today. Today. No, not- one of the last words today. Oh, no, ever. <laughs> ever. Yeah, no, yeah, that would be Z. Yep, yep, sure. Man, it's a good thing this thing's in alphabetical order. It is. Although sometimes I wish it wasn't. Oh. 3B. Responding, reacting, or developing independently of the whole, as in an autonomous growth. Mm. Number four. Controlled by the auto, auto, I, why do I have such a hard time with this word? Controlled by the autonomic nervous system. We have a synonym at the end for all of these definitions. It is the word free, F R E E, and autonomously is an adverb. This comes from Greek autonomos, which means independent. Um, that is from ot plus nomos, which means law. Uh, so if we look at what we talked about earlier, the ot prefix. Uh, basically means self, mm-hmm. uh, and then nomos is law. So self-law, you're you're controlling the law of your world by yourself. That's basically what that says. But then, like you were saying, everything going on inside you, you don't have any control you of that. You, know, think, you, you think it's uh, maybe the illusion of autonomy, really. I right, mean, because right. if you're like, yeah, I'm going to go do this, and then... Your body's you're, like, your uh-huh, body, no, I don't think so. It's my turn Yeah, now. I got some secretions I got to do, some glandular <laughs> secretions, which are just not going to allow... For at this at the time, yeah. So and again, I was thinking, you know, that should be that should be a uh, live autonomous or die. That would be, oh yeah, get out of here, but right. <laughs> that's the that's the new phrase. Live yeah, autonomous. Just, or yeah, die. Right. it doesn't really flow as well. No, but it seems a little headier and it, yeah. like it has a little more weight. That would to be it. good on a t-shirt, right? Um, and then just lastly, with don't the don't tread on autonomous. <sighs> don't tread on. Isn't it? Don't tread on me. Yeah, but me is if, I guess uh, uh, self. Right. Yeah, yeah, self yeah, yeah. would consider ourselves autonomous unless of course we came from a society where we were communal sure then we would think we were part of a whole another one i thought of is uh autonomous to be you and me or <laughs> wait free to wait, be you and free me to be, autonomous to free be free to be autonomous me. yeah and that, autonomous sir i i did you do you know what free to be you and me is that movie the, well yeah it was like a series of songs and sketches and things oh, from that, back in the, in the 80s Dude, that was from the seven. I, was that, it from the seventies? Maybe ca- when they had projectors. <laughs> yep. In movies or in schools, classrooms. Yeah, yeah they'd yeah. wheel that thing in, and then they would roll it up. It came on two reels. It was not. I loved that thing. Mm. That had the uh, baby bald yep. as a ping pong ball. Mel Brooks. And then the ladies first. Uh, ladies first. Yes, ladies first. Yes, yeah. Yes, that, yes. Oh, so many memorable. With the tigers. Yeah. Well, and the the cannibals. They were gonna. They yeah. were gonna eat her. Yeah. Well, because they and were they tigers. Sh- I, well, think I thought they were cannibals. I thought, oh, see, it's been so long. See, I can't me remember. too, me too. I actually too. brought up Free to Be You and Me not that long ago because we had a word in here. Uh, it was a woman's name, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Margot she, Thomas. No, no, no. Oh, okay. A, a <clears throat> name that starts with A. All right. Uh, and she was the goddess of wind or something like that. And in Free to Be You and Me, um, there was a story about her. She was so fast and... They, her dad, she was a princess or something, and her dad wanted her to marry 
a man and she said, okay, I'll marry the first man who can beat me in a race. In a race. Yes. I remember that story. It was so good. Alan Alda was the, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, people. <laughs> hey, narrating speaking of Alan Alda, I really want to talk about this. Screw the pooch. Was, was that what? a thing that Colonel Blake said all the time? I don't want to screw the in, pooch. In mash? Screw the pooch. Yeah. Which I guess means mess something up to screw the pooch. Uh, yeah. Okay. To mess up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why that screw the pooch. So that was a phrase that was said in MASH a lot? I feel like I learned that from Colonel <laughs> from Blake. That from Colonel Blake. Because it doesn't seem like a Colonel Potter thing to say because he was... Yeah. Well, I could see. Screw the pooch. Maybe. maybe Is that a military thing? Does the military use screw the pooch? You are asking the wrong person. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm not in the military world. You're, you're not? Okay. I like MASH. I, I, don't, I, I haven't seen all of it and I don't have it uh, as memorized as you probably do, but I'm sure it was in there. Oh, yeah. We had to watch it call, while we eat. Oh, that was a, that to. was one of the few exceptions in our family when TV could be on during dinner time. Mash was appropriate. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should call Alan Alda up and uh, ask him about that. Okay. Uh, all right. Where were we? Oh, um, good question. Oh, and I was going to say in the, the A's. We were, we're in the A's. Still there, <laughs> right? Uh, okay. And the word nimble is related etymologically uh, to autonomous, probably because of the word nomos, law, nimble is sort of similar. Anyway, we are going to move on to autonomy. Uh, This is a noun from circa 1623. One, the quality or state of being self-governing, especially the right of self-government. Yep, you said it was Hmm. political. Okay. Number two, self-directing freedom and especially moral independence. Moral. Yeah. Number th- number three, a self-governing state. Anything else you got to say about autonomy? Okay. No, we've had a lot of talk about that. Yes, yep. we have. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. Next, we have the word autopilot. Mm, Little that back- reminds me of the airplane movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, all right. Let's, yeah. let's hold on to that. We'll okay. get to that. But okay. I, quickly, okay. I want to say in the last episode uh, with Andrew, we had automatic pilot. Oh. And, uh, and the synonym was autopilot. Uh, and we said, people just say autopilot. Who says automatic pilot? Hmm. Anyway, uh, so autopilot is a noun from 1916. One, a device for automatically steering ships, aircraft, and spacecraft. Whoa. So Elon Musk and this whole thing is, uh, it's not self-driving. It's uh, autopilot. Goes really. on autopilot. Okay. And can you can you tell the story of uh, from that movie Airplane, what the autopilot joke yeah was. it was uh that didn't wasn't uh, they just hit the button that said autopilot and an inflatable rubber man came very cartoony toony right looked yep. like one of those things that you punch right right with sand in the bottom that rocks back and forth mm-hmm. yeah and he just drove the plane yeah. or flew the plane excuse me yeah it was awesome if, if you've never seen the movie Airplane, oh no wait it didn't did she have to blow it up with her mm. mouth and the tube was in his fly of his pants and she was blowing him up wasn't that it it might have been. We're gonna we're gonna move on from that. Right, right. But I think you might yeah. be partially right. Or he was deflating, and she oh, had and to she blow had to reinflate. Off. That yeah. might have been what it was. That's what it was. Okay. Um, and then the number two definition for autopilot is the number two definition for automatic pilot, uh, which was in the previous episode. Next, we have autopolyploid. Mm, yeah, this is a good one. A U T O P O L Y P L O I D. It is a noun from 1928. An individual or strain whose chromosome complement consists of more than two complete copies of the genome of a single ancestral species. Autopolyploid is also an adjective. And, ooh, I like this word. Autopolyploidy is a noun. Mm. Uh, okay. You're very autopolyploidy. Autopolyploidy. Don't be so autopolyploidy. Uh, all right, next. Uh, this is an interesting one. It is the word autopsy. All right. Uh, This is a noun from 1678. One, an examination of a body after death to determine the cause of death or the character and extent of changes produced by disease. And it is called also necropsy or necropsy. Um, we'll, We'll just finish this up and then we'll talk about it. Number two, a critical examination, evaluation, or assessment of someone or something past. Autopsy is also a transitive verb. Um, This is from the Greek autopsia, which means act of seeing with one's own eyes. And uh, that is actually the name of a documentary made by a guy who I think his first name was Stan. Anyway, um, it's basically a documentary 
of autopsies made in maybe the 70s or something. Hmm. I saw part of it in a film class and I had to end up looking away for most of it. Uh, it was really hard to watch. Um, my wife, Sharon, would have loved to watch that, actually. Um, and yeah, the the name of the, the documentary is Active Scene with one's own, one's own Eyes, which is the Greek word autopsia, which it's an autopsy. Um, and then let's see, that is from aut plus opsis, which means sight or appearance. And there's more at the word optic. Uh, so yeah, for those who don't know, when an autopsy is done, um, they want to figure out the cause of death. They open the body up and figure out what happened. Why did this body die? Is this, I'm just I'm thinking about mummification really right now, uh, mm. but that was not an autopsy. They, no. they didn't really care why you died. They just wanted to make sure you got to the underworld. They, right they might have done autopsies for all we know, uh, for all I know, at least. I don't know. Some, somebody knows. But yeah, that was mummification was when somebody died, they would take out all the organs and mm-hmm. wrap the body. And so it was preserved for the afterlife, essentially. OK. I guess. Yeah. A little but, bit, little but bit what is it called when you at the funeral home when they prepare your body right for uh, viewing? Similar. Well, I th- I think a lot. Of, I was going to say something that I I didn't want to. I don't know if I can embalm. back up. So yes, embalm. So that's when they uh, get rid of all the blood in the body mm-hmm. and they replace it with embalming fluid so the body doesn't uh, uh, deteriorate right away. So you can have an open casket funeral essentially. Right. Right. What yeah, do they there's do no with reason- all that blood? Where does it go? Oh, you don't want to know. I don't want to know? I don't know. Well, then I didn't ask. Nope. Don't, okay. I'm sure they do something with it. Right. Actually, that is a good question. It's got to go somewhere. You should Google that. There's golden blood, right? I wouldn't Mo- be surprised. Okay. I mean, we're made up of lots of different molecules and things, mm-hmm. so it, or there probably is. Okay. Well, anyway. Thank All right. We're going to move on to autoradiogram. Uh, this is a noun from 1931, and we just have the synonym autoradiograph, which is our next word. It is a noun from 1903, an image produced on a photographic film or plate by the radiations from a radioactive substance in an object, which is in close contact with the emulsion. Uh, auto Autoradiographic is an adjective. Autoradiography is a noun. Is that an x-ray? I think it's similar. Okay. Uh, like yes. a precursor, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. 1903. Uh, I don't remember when x-rays were figured out. Um, but yeah, they seem to be related. Do you think there's truth to the Tesla x-ray? That he was a person who was like, yeah, hey, we can do that. Like he knew about that. Oh, you're talking about Nikolai, Nikolai, Nikolai Tesla. Tesla. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, Not the car Tesla. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I would not be surprised okay. because that guy had so many inventions and things that he had discussed or made plans of and never created and like things that we use today he had a hand in mm-hmm. or things that we have now that he actually invented but didn't actually yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if he was involved with x-ray somehow and i don't know why we're still on x-ray i'm sorry about this but i feel like the guy who was finally got the right equipment to do it was just shooting it into everything and didn't he kill his wife over radiate his wife or something and he like he kept taking pictures of his hand and then his hand got all burnt up or something yeah i think there was something about that i think the the only thing that i know in regards to that is that he found x-rays by accident right yeah, they like he had film that was exposed to something accidentally, uh, and it and it developed into something, and that was the beginning of X-rays. But yeah, he I think he did something with his hand. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people were killed in that time period when right. people were just experimenting like crazy, crazy, and who knows what they were they were doing. But yeah, uh, there, there's probably some truth to that. Okay. I, just, I always just remember being very scared as a child going to the dentist when they put that big... I, I haven't been to the dentist in years, so they probably don't have that big camera oh, on sure a swivel do. arm. Oh, yeah. That just, and it comes down to yep. a conical point, and they just I feel like they're just shooting a direct stream of radiation just into my mouth. Like, it, oh, it, do, they, do you still have to bite down on that? Yeah. Oh, all that stuff still the, happens? Because that's like the, the film. I don't know if they use actual film anymore but yeah that's the thing that needs to get exposed oh but it feels so good when they shoot you with those x-rays i dude i quit going to the dentist because of that uh, process it's i mean it's a very low amount of radiation it's you're exposed to it a little bit you you get more radiation like in a plane maybe or something like that than because you're than up closer things. to the sun uh it might be part of that um i think just in the i don't know i don't know the details but right. you're exposed to radiation all the time and it's it's minimal 
But the people who work there, who are exposed to it, yeah, they every leave day, the room. Well, right, because they, <laughs> be, because they're exposed to it so often. Uh-huh. When you go once or twice a year, yeah, it's not that much, right? Okay, but maybe some people are more sensitive to it. Um, all right, we're getting near the end of this episode, people. We're we're very close. Auto rotation is next. It is a noun from 1926. The turning of the rotor of an autogyro or a helicopter with the resulting lift caused solely by the aerodynamic forces induced by motion of the rotor along its flight path. Auto rotate is a uh, an in, an intransitive verb, and I think it was in the episode with Ryan two episodes ago. We had the word auto gyro, mm-hmm. um, so it's, yeah, that which is basically a helicopter. I love helicopters. I really want to go in a helicopter ride. When Sharon and I were in New Zealand, mm-hmm. uh, we had the opportunity. Uh, it's a long story. We could we could e- choose either to fly in a little small little plane to get back to our hotel quickly or in a helicopter because mm-hmm. uh, we didn't want to sit in the like eight hour bus ride again. Right. Um, we we wanted we should have chosen the helicopter. It was a lot more expensive. Yes. So we chose the plane. Yes. Uh, which was still amazing. Okay. Um, but the helicopter would have been cool because then they would have landed us on a glacier and we could like look at the views and. Oh, it would have been yeah, awesome. I, almost any time the helicopter is an option and take I it. can afford it. I t- yeah, because we were in St. Lucia, your sister oh, yeah. and I were in St. Lucia. And then they did the same thing. They're like, oh, do you want, like they scare the crap out of you driving you from the airport to the uh, resort. which In that know, tiny little plane. Yeah. yeah or driving yeah. you. No, yeah, yeah, driving yeah. you. And then yeah, scary, you're like, yeah. whoa. And it's like, right. It feels like you're going to, there's cliffs and you feel like you're just, it's deadville. You're just doomed right mm-hmm. and then they you get they get you there and they're like hey you want to drive back or can we take you in a helicopter and then the idea of being flung through the air seems less intimidating than having to drive back on the ground it's weird but anyway it's beautiful when you get up there so you did take the helicopter yeah we took the helicopter oh. yeah because it was uh it was one of those late in this it was off season mm. and like somebody had they, they offered some special you know how the internet is they say hey we have these things and then you pay for hardly any money and you get there. And so we were like, well, we'll just eat that up by taking the helicopter ride mm-hmm. back. Yeah. I nice. mean, yeah, if it's cheap, then do it. Yeah. All right. Next is auto route. Right then goes for everything. If it's cheap, do it. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's not expensive, just do it. Right. Even yeah, if yeah. you don't like it. Right. Just do it. <laughs> Uh, okay, auto route or auto route is next. Uh, it is a noun from 1951. An expressway, especially in France. Mm. So I guess they're, uh, most of their expressways in France are called auto routes or auto routes. Uh, uh, and it was interesting that Le Car was not called the La Auto. If we're gonna, it's so much French connection between auto. Le Car. Yeah, remember Le Car. No. You don't remember those things? What's that? Oh, they were so cute. Is that a French car? It's like the Renault of its time. Yeah, uh, it was a French car. From when? Before my time? Well, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons in second grade, so I remember that the guy who owned the comic book fantasy Dungeons and Dragons store had a car, mm. and it was parked in the strip mall, uh, so it had to be around that time period. So that was actually a French car? La Car. It said La Car, car on the car. It seems like they didn't try too hard. That had racing stripes that went down it, and then the racing stripes... It, I feel incorporated le car. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They were tiny. I'm not a car guy, so I don't know about or this, but okay. I should look up a picture. Yeah, le car. Next, we have Autos de Fay. I think we had a similar one. De in, Fay. Yeah. So that this sounds is French. A-U-T-O-S hyphen D-A hyphen F-E. And there's an accent on the E. Uh, oh, so this is the plural of auto de Fay which was in an episode with my dad a few days ago. Um, Yep, it is, just to remind you, the ceremony (laughs) for pronouncing judgment by the Inquisition, which was followed by the execution of sentence by secular authorities, broadly, the burning of a heretic. Okay, so so that... And that's not cute at all. I was thinking it was a kind of a cute little word because you think of duvet. That seems comfy. Right. You hear duvet, and then but it, this is you're killing someone. You're yeah. passing judgment on them. Not cute. And then killing them. Uh, wow. And that is uh, Portuguese. Oh right. It literally act of the faith. Have you heard people speak Portuguese before? Oh well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like weird Spanish. It's like Italian Spanish. Yeah. Something. Y- you almost think you know what's going on, and then it just. And then if you, it's like the Brazilians, mm. their version of it is like even more 
off. It's amazing. Right, because Portuguese in Portugal is their own form of Portuguese, yes. and then Brazilian Portuguese is a whole other yes. version. Of I it. can't get the inflection. I don't even know what they're talking about. Like, you know, you can kind of judge sometimes because there's a tone or a, sure, sure. a speed or a, a lilt or an accent that lends to an emotion that you can, you know, empathize with. But right. I could get nothing from watching a, Port- a Brazilian person that I knew in Chicago Skyping with uh, someone home in Brazil. No idea. No idea. Zero. And the thing that gets me is uh, if when I look at the words, like I can read Spanish. Sure. Right. I can read it out loud. But a lot of the the, the letters don't aren't pronounced the way that right. I would think they're pronounced in Portuguese. It's yes. very confusing. And Portugal's a lot like Chile in that they were just like, no, the entire coastline is us. <laughs> yeah. You can this have inland. Yeah. But if you want to get to the water, you have to talk to us, which is weird that Spain was such a maritime power. I wonder where they launched from. I mean, Spain still has a good amount of I guess coastal it does, right, area. It all, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. North and south. North and south. Right, yeah. All right. Are you ready for the last word? Uh, no, I am not ready for the last word because I just want this to go on for days and days. But yes, I understand we have to stop. Well, I'm pretty sure this is our longest episode oh, ever. Uh, ever. We, we I'm were... proud of that fact. This is great. Okay. Are you going to try and break the record no. next time? Nope, 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 nope. Uh, well, we've been recording for over 34 minutes, 34. but, I, but we, we were chatting a little bit before I actually started. So mm-hmm. we're probably closer to a okay. half hour. Okay. But the last word is autosexing. Mm, a- what a great word. Did you pick this to be the final word? No, it's the it's end random. of the column. It's just random? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is the end of the first column on page 84. <laughs> it is spelled A-U-T-O-S-E-X-I-N-G. It is an adjective from 1936. It's a good year. And it means exhibiting different char- uh, characters. Let me try that again. Exhibiting different characters in the two sexes at birth or hatching. Uh, and then the example is autosexing chickens. Uh, so I guess this is saying that there are different characteristics of an animal when they're born so you can figure out whether they're male male or female? Does that sound right? Exhibiting different characters in the two sexes at birth or hatching. Mm, I'm completely confused. I'm I'm 100% confused. It sounds like... uh... Well, my job here is done. Okay, fantastic. It sounds like... I don't know if these are characteristics or physical characteristics, because it says characters, not characteristics, um, to to determine male or female, I guess. Hmm. Um, yeah, interesting. And, um, you know, th- that seems kind of maybe maybe farmers are still some, something still use this term, but I've never heard of this. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I need to look a little bit more into what what is this? What is, what is this process? I don't know. Because it seems like a factory to me. At this point, it sounds like it's uh, manufacturing or something. Like, but, but well, and I guess that would make sense because chickens aren't really on farms anymore, are they? They're in. Well, they're in some farms, but they're in factory farms as well. Okay, don't factory. get me started on no, that. No, yeah, no. See, that's right. Yeah. Well, I thought that word was going to be a little saucier. <laughs> right. It seems like not every time you see the word sex is it right. going to be saucy. Yeah. Uh, Drag. Yeah, okay, yeah, too bad. Right. Sorry, kids. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's not saucy today. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of the episode. Uh, what is your word of the episode? You have to pick one. Uh, would you like to look at the words again to remind you, or do you remember what we read? Was there one that jumped out at you? Mm. Well, I, I, yeah, but I feel bad. It was that one that sounded like duvet, auto, auto de fe. Uh, auto's de fe. Auto's de fe. I mean, that seems like that's just so much consequence with that word. Yeah. It's not my favorite word, but that was the one that jumped out sure. at me the most. The, the yeah. definition doesn't fit the way the word sounds. Yes. And yeah. then the definition itself is so, ugh. Well, same with auto sexing. The definition didn't fit what you thought right. it might be. I didn't think right. When then it shows goes to show you how presumptuous maybe I am. Well, I no, guess, I, in particular. Well, yes, you are obviously very right. presumptuous. <laughs> right. But yeah. You, we all are in general. Mm-hmm. We 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 judge books by their cover, right. yeah, we whether we mean to or not. Right. Which is why the cover of this one is is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what edition is this? By the way, what year did this one come out? Um, Do you know? Have you figured I, that one out? I think it might be 2012. Oh, it's in the it, hots. It's a little bit, little bit older. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, but we're we're gonna end the episode there. Okay. Otto's de Fe is uh, the word of the episode. And uh, thank you, thank you for joining me. Oh, and Mark, I don't think I even told you this. This episode is airing on New Year's New Year's Day, 2020. Whoa. 
So this is the very first episode of the year. Oh my God, I'm glad you didn't tell me that at the beginning. A little too much pressure? Yeah, I would have been right, crushed. Yeah, and yeah. what a way to start the year with the longest episode ever. <laughs> That's uh, the right trend upward in maybe, time. Maybe, yeah. the, maybe you should be the first episode of every year. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you got 15 more to go-ish. Sure. Uh, all right. Thank you for joining me, listening. Uh, join the my Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, call call my voicemail, my Google Voice number. Leave me a message. Tell me your favorite word that starts with the letter A. And uh, until next time, this is Spencer and Mark reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of this podcast called The Dictionary. I hope you knew that before you uh, started playing it. Um, as the pattern is going, I have a guest reader. Well, no, she's not a guest reader. She's a guest. Uh, this is my cousin, Claire. Say hi. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. Can you tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you do, who you are, whatever that means to you? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I'm from Duluth, Minnesota, and I currently live in Guatemala, Guatemala City, and I uh, have the honor of working with human rights defenders there. That's awesome. Is there a, a place where somebody can go to learn more about what you do, uh, learn more yeah. about that? Yeah. Check out our website, uh, nisqua.org, N-I-S-G-U-A. G-U-A, not uh -huh. Q-U-A. No. Nisqua. Okay. Cabal. Yep. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, let's get some eyes on that and learn what's going on because there's, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. Yeah, yeah. We're, I, 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 this isn't necessarily the place to get into that, but <laughs> that's um, people should know that there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I don't know a fraction of what you know, but uh, I don't know. Do you want to give just a quick little description of what what you do? Yeah, well, sure. Yeah, so I so I accompany human rights defenders, and my organization works with genocide survivors who are seeking justice for crimes of the past, so like massacres against their people, genocide against the Mayan people, and land defenders who are mostly people, the people we work with are mostly resisting mines and dams. So like me mega projects that are gonna completely destroy their territory um, and they have not been consulted about the implementation of these mega projects. I am related to some very amazing people, uh, very <laughs> smart people, people who are doing some awesome things. And here I am reading the dictionary. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> oh, I, I'm glad to have you. Uh, I love, this is why I like having guests on because uh, it just brings a new perspective, a new voice, a new brain mm. to this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to be reading the third section of the pa of page 84. Uh, and uh, our first word is autosum. A-U-T-O-S-O-M-E. Uh, you may have no connection to any of these words. You may have nothing to say, uh, but we're just going to sort of jump in and figure it out. Uh, all right, so autosome is a... Actually, it's autosome. Apologies, mm -hmm. autosome. Uh, it is a noun from 1906. A chromosome other than a sex chromosome. Uh, so I guess a sex chromosome would be X and Y. Mm -hmm. uh, that's typically what they say, but there are other chromosomes that are uh, not X or Y. That's kind of the, the, as far as my knowledge goes in that world. Uh, autosomal is an adjective and autosomally is an adverb. Yeah, let's mm. move on to autostrata. Uh, autostrada with a D. Uh, this is a noun from, where's the year? 1927. An expressway, especially in Italy. So I guess the expressways in Italy are called autostrada. And in the last episode, we had auto route, uh, which is an ex expressway ex expressway in France. Hmm. Uh, and uh, actually, in a few episodes before that, we had autobahn, which is an expressway in Germany. <laughs> They're all related. Uh, so let's see. This is Italian from the word automobile plus strada, which means street. Uh, and in Latin, strata, with a T, is a paved road. And there's more at the word street. Next, we have autosuggestion. Ooh, I wonder if this is... Oh, no. All right, this is a noun from 1880. I was thinking this would be, like, 2010. Um, an influencing of one's own attitudes, behavior, or physical condition by mental processes other than conscious thought. And a synonym is self-hypnosis. I'm not even totally sure what I just read. 
Um, and auto suggest is a transitive verb. I was thinking this was going to be um, like when you're typing a, a text to somebody uh, and it suggests a word for you. Yeah. Um, oh. What's mm. what's that site? Uh, oh, autocorrect. Yeah. That's that's what I'm th- not auto suggestion, yeah. but autocorrect. Yeah. And there's a great website called Damn You Autocorrect where it puts <laughs> in things and it uh, hilarity ensues. Um, all right. Next we have auto autotelic. A-U-T-O-T-E-L-I-C. This is an adjective from 1900. Having a purpose in and not apart from itself. This is from Greek autotelis, which is from the prefix ot, plus telos, which means end. And there's more at the word telos. Next, we have a word that I will probably mispronounce. Autotetraploid. Do you know what that is? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> Auto tetraploid. It is a noun from 1930. I'm going to tell you what it is. An individual or strain whose chromosome complement consists of four copies of a single genome due to doubling of an ancestral chromosome complement. Wow. Uh, yeah. Auto tetraploid is an adjective also. And auto tetraploidy is a noun and a fun word to say. And in the last episode, we had. Uh, auto polyploidy uh, again I think it's related to chromosomes and things that I don't know <laughs> anything about all right next we have auto autotomy autotomy uh, it's not autonomy uh, it is autotomy it is a noun from 1887 reflex separation of a part as an appendage f- as as an appendage from the body um, also, division of the body into two or more pieces. Uh, so would this be maybe when a cell is dividing uh, to create a new being, it, it, it separates and the cells divide and divide? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Um, aut- aut- autotomous is an adject- adjective and autotomize is a verb. Sometimes you just get these words and you got nothing to say. I have no idea what this is all about. <laughs> Uh, all right, next we have autotransfusion. A little bit more clear, maybe. A noun from 1886. Return of autologous blood to the patient's own circulatory system. Uh, so the first thing I'm thinking of is uh, when somebody has a problem with their kidneys, dialysis. Is that yeah. what that is? Does, do you, how much do you know about dialysis? You know, that is hilarious that you asked me this because somebody I accompany in Guatemala just asked me to to research dialysis ah. for him and home dialysis and I was like I, oh my god I would love to help you out and this is the worst ask you could make of me <laughs> I so can't help you but my best friend works in a dialysis clinic so I connected her with him <laughs> okay so you didn't end up learning or researching much about dialysis literally but, nothing okay yeah the, the all I know I think is that they take the blood out of the person, they clean it or do something yeah. to it, and then they put it back in their body. Yeah. And they have to do that often um, because their body keeps on messing up the blood. I'm putting yeah. this in very layman's terms because <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that would be autotransfusion. No, yeah, but it's it's really intense, and they use like like really interesting tools. Like They use super purified water, mm-hmm. and then using osmosis, the bad stuff from the blood goes into the super purified water i don't know this you know you know more than i do (laughs) you thought you knew nothing but you know stuff uh Uh, all right so that's auto transfusion next we have autotroph uh a-u-t-o-t-r-o-p-h by the way uh if you didn't know the prefix auto that we've been talking about for many many words um essentially means self Mm -hmm. like that's where it comes from it comes from the greek autos which means Mm -hmm. self and so that's what a lot of these um are about uh in some way so autotroph is a noun from 1938 an autotrophic organism so it's just a shorter word to say that shorter way to say that Mm. Um, and autotrophic is our next word it is an adjective from 1893 one, requiring only carbon dioxide or carbonates or carbonates as a source of carbon and a simple inorganic, inorganic nitrogen compound for metabolic synthesis of organic molecules as glucose, as in autotrophic plants. Compare to the word heterotrophic, which I am assuming usually when they say compare to the word, that means it's the opposite. So I'm assuming heterotrophic is the opposite of autotrophic. That was the number one definition. <laughs> a lot of words I'm not familiar with or just don't understand how it all 
uh, relates. But number two, not requiring a specified exogenous factor for normal met- metabolism. Autotrophically is an adverb, and autotr- autotrophy or autotrophy is a noun. Uh, so the etymology says, maybe this will help us understand a little bit, from the Greek autotrophos, which means supplying one's own food, uh, plus aut plus trephine, which means to nourish. So that's, a, I think, a nice, succinct way to understand mm-hmm. that. Does that help you? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, next we have autotune. This is a pretty new new phrase, new word. Um, it could be uh, capital A U T T O hyphen capital T U N E, or uh, there could be no capitalizations. This is a transitive verb from 2003. Definitely one of the newest words I've come across in here. It means to adjust or alter a recording of a voice with auto tune software or other audio editing software, especially to correct sung notes that are out of tune. Uh, This is from Autotune, a proprietary signal processor. Do you know much about Autotune? You've probably heard it and maybe didn't even realize you heard it. Yeah, I just grew up in the Autotune era. No, well, my main interaction with Autotune is that my dad, for like five years when I was in high school, every song that came on the radio, he said, is this Autotune? (laughs) Uh, He's so scandalous. Your dad has a special (laughs) sense of humor, so I don't know if he either was genuinely asking if it was auto tune right? or if he was because so much of music especially back then but even now is auto tuned or was auto tuned yeah. so he's he has a fun sarcastic sense of humor i can't wait to get him on the podcast <laughs> um yeah auto tune it's a little crazy i think a little overused but at the same time i think some comedic musicians use it in a in a fun way yeah. uh, maybe i can find an example and drop it in one of the fir- first ones i can think of is um Hide your kids, hide your wife. That was a definitely a, a, a yeah. viral song that went around. So hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife. Um, I don't have any auto tune software, um, but maybe it would be fun to auto tune my voice if I could figure out how to do that. Mm. I don't know. Um, all right, next we have auto worker. All one word. It is a noun from 1901. A person employed in the automobile manufacturing industry. Uh, that's not me. Next, we have autoxidation. Autoxidation. Um, all right, so this is actually, we are now out of the auto words. This is our first one that um, sounds similar, but it's uh, a little bit different. This is a noun from 1883. Oxidation by direct combination with oxygen, as in air, at ordinary temperatures. How much do you know about oxidation? Yeah, I got nothing. On I got that nothing one. either. All right, here's a good one. Autumn. Oh, Aww. so wholesome. Yeah, compared to all these other ones. <laughs> uh, let's see. Autumn is a noun from the 14th century. Uh, that's its first usage in um, the English that we are familiar with. One, the season between summer and winter comprising in the northern hemisphere, usually the months of September, October, and November, or as reckoned astronomically extending from the September equinox to the December solstice, called also fall. And we just had the December solstice uh, at the time of recording. Today is what, the 28th? So a week ago yeah. was the summer, the, uh, sorry, the winter solstice solstice in December. And uh, we're finally at that time where the days are getting longer and longer, which I love. Uh, number two, a period of maturity or, uh, uh, this word goes over to the second line, or incipient decline. As in, the autumn of life. Autumnal is an adjective, and autumn, autumnly. How do you say that? Aut- autumnally is an adverb. <laughs> I have I, I get stumped every once in a while. How would you use that in a sentence? Autumnally? Uh, like I don't know. <laughs> she was walking along autumnally. autumnally. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I've had that same question for a lot of these adverb forms. I'm like, yeah, what, for real. do people really use that in a sentence? It is, I guess technically it's a word, but how maybe, has it ever been used? Maybe it would be like, the leaves are falling autumnally. Oh, interesting. Uh, I'm looking out the window right now, and there's not a single leaf on that tree. Oh, man. So we are well past autumn. Uh, I, I think that is my favorite time of year. Yeah. I don't know about you, but yeah, totally. it's it's not too cold, not too hot. You, If you get a little too cold, you can bundle up. Uh, it's beautiful out the the. the 
leaves are changing color and uh, f- Halloween totally. is that's our favorite time favorite Halloween our favorite favorite holiday <laughs> oh okay yeah that's the one thing I climate related thing I don't like about living in Guatemala is that there's no autumn. The seasons yeah do you yeah so what's the range of temperatures throughout the year I mean how far away are you from the, the, the equator um so okay so I'm kind of on I'm I'm only a little bit south of Florida, so it's it's mm. really not that far south. Like people are always really surprised yeah. by how close it is. But um, I live in Guatemala City, which is like 70s and sunny all year round, which is great. Mm-hmm. But for like five months out of the year, there's the rainy season. Oh, okay. So that just means that in the afternoon and night, it rains like a ton. Mm-hmm. But um, right now, there's like three weeks around the turn of the year that are kind of cold. And by cold, I mean like 50s. <laughs> I would really kill spoiled. for 50s. <laughs> I mean, in Chicago, the last week or so, it's been in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And I'm like, this is amazing. I mean, granted, climate change, I'm not a fan of that. But yeah. it's it's beautiful compared to what we had, which was the 10s or the 20s. I mean, and you grew up in Minnesota, so you're like, yeah. oh, that's nothing. Balmy. Yeah, really. <laughs> but if it's above freezing, I'm happy i can't really deal with the cold weather anymore yeah um come move to guatemala i would love to visit we were talking about uh, this is not guatemala but we were talking about the galapagos islands your Ooh. your brother joel went to the galapagos and i would love to go visit there but that's off yeah. of the coast of ecuador yeah how far away is that from guatemala um well i don't know mile wise but um pretty far i mean i feel i don't know maybe i'm totally wrong on this but i feel like guatemala is maybe right in the middle of between Central like, America? Well, well, like between Chicago and Ecuador, that Guatemala would be oh, kind of okay. right in the middle. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that seems a lot further away than I would have expected. I should look at a map. Yeah. You yeah, think of uh, all of Central America as being close together, you know, smaller countries. But yeah. Mexico is huge. So first yeah. of all, they're way further away from us than we think. Um, and yeah, the, it's, it's not as small, I, I think, as people think yeah that, that area at totally. Least. yeah totally. all right well we have one more for this episode right. it is autumn crocus c-r-o-c-u-s two separate words do you have any idea what this is autumn crocus it makes me think of a, a flower like a crocus flower that just comes out in autumn Ooh. autumnally Ad- autumnally Blum- yeah blooms. that would be perfect <laughs> um all right so i i don't think you're that far off um, it is a noun from 1822, an autumn blooming ah. col- colchicum, C-O-L-C-H-I-C-U-M, colchicum. Do you have any idea what that is? <laughs> what? No. Yeah, an autumn blooming colchicum. Yeah, you said it perfectly. Uh, I I think it's some sort of plant. Um, the scientific name is colchicum autumnale, autumnale. So that's oh, what that's that hilarious. is. Um, I, we'll need to look up uh, what that looks like. Um, but you were basically spot on for that. <laughs> um, all right. So looking back at all the words that we talked about, was there one that jumped out to you uh, that you would want to pick as the word of the episode? <gasps> oh, my gosh. It's a close tie between that one. What was it? Autumn? Autumn crocus or crocus? crocus? It doesn't crocus? give me a pronunciation guide. Well, I guess, well, a crocus is a flower. So, oh. it, yeah, probably it's probably autumn crocus. Yeah. Um, it's a tie for me between... Autumn crocus and auto workers. Um, yeah. Do you have a special uh, uh, um, feeling towards auto workers, workers in general? I just I I feel like auto workers have been you know highly organized. They have a great union that's struggled for a lot of good things. Yeah. And I think there was just a big auto worker strike somewhere, wasn't there? There could have been. Yeah. I don't pay as much attention to politics as I should. You would know better <laughs> than me. Uh but you were uh, probably right. I I know. I mean Detroit has they've had their ups and downs, you know, that's the big auto worker mecca. Yeah. And uh yeah, they they need some help financially in Michigan in general, but especially in Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. So solidarity with auto workers yeah. and autumn crocuses. <laughs> they need solidarity. <laughs> yeah. Are there, is there an autumn crocus union maybe? <laughs> yeah. We need to investigate that. All right. Do you want to, do you want to pick one or should we pick both of them? Um, 
Yeah, I want to pick both. All right, we will pick both. Autumn yes. Crocus and Auto Worker. Those are the words of the episode. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, <laughs> I didn't tell you this beforehand, but your episode is airing on uh, January 2nd, wow. 2020. Oh. So uh, right at the beginning of the year. Oh, this is so exciting. Thank you so much, Spencer. And, and much love to all of you word nerds. And uh, go check out that website that we mentioned at the be- beginning, nisqua.org. Uh-huh. Yep. Go check it out. See what she's doing. See what she's working on. Uh, see if you can help in any way. Uh, I'm sure that they could use any help that they can get, both uh, person power and financial mm-hmm. power. All right. Thank you. Uh, and until next time, this is Spencer and Claire reading the dictionary. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Hey, guess what? I have another guest on this uh, episode. Um, We've had like probably eight episodes in a row with guests. Uh, Mm. Today is my sister. Woohoo! That's my sister, Jessica. I'm the sister. Hey. Finally, you've uh, made it. You've, you've, you're on the podcast. I feel like I've made it. This <laughs> is it. You know you've made it when you are on the Dictionary, the dictionary. podcast. Yeah. Also, when you're uh, an answer to a, a clue in a crossword puzzle. Oh, that's it. Yep. Top of the line. I know I've made it when I'm at that point. So uh, tell the people who you are. What, what do we need to know about you? Oh, man. Spencer's sister, Jessica Parks. Uh, I, I got to watch Spencer be a small child and grow up to this incredible word nerd, so I, I feel pretty special. Don't tell the people about my childhood. <laughs> Nothing. My lips are sealed. Uh, all right. Should we get started? Please. Uh, by the way, your episode will be airing on January 3rd, <gasps> Ooh. 2020. Ooh, 2020. That's That's very weird. Um, okay. Our first word is O tonight. O O. Oh, Oh, tonight. I feel so stupid sometimes reading these words. Uh, It is spelled A-U-T-U-N-I-T-E. Oh, I look at the pronunciation guide and it tells me how to say it, but then, uh, yeah, we're just going to say Oh, tonight. Oh, tonight. It could also be... Auto night? No, because it's not A-U-T-O. It's A-U-T-U-N-I-T-E. Oh, tonight. Oh, Oh, tonight. Or Oh, tonight. Okay. Oh, and I'll just tell you this. It is from the a town in France called Autun. Oh. Or something like that. A-U-T-U-N. Uh, all right. This is a noun from circa 1852. A radioactive, usually lemon yellow calcium phosphate mineral that occurs in tabular crystals and in scales and that is an ore of uranium. Oh, we, we fit right into your wheelhouse, right? Yeah, the, I know all about ores of uranium. I know you do. Uh, but we don't want to hear about that right now. We're uh, going to uh, move on. No. Save that. Yeah, exactly. Next podcast. Uh, that was a joke, obviously. Uh, all right, next we have aux, A-U-X. This is an abbreviation for auxiliary verb. Yep. Uh, I also am familiar with that term. You know, the aux input in your car or whatever. You can plug in your phone or something. Huh. Uh, yeah. Part of our vernacular. Uh, all right, this next word is auxiliary or auxiliary. It is the first form. It is an adjective from the 15th century. 1A, offering or providing help. Hmm. 1B, functioning in a subsidiary capacity. I remember, for some reason when I was younger, I had a problem pronouncing the word capacity. I would see it in an elevator. I'm like, capacity? <laughs> Cap- capacity. Capacity. Uh, but no, it's capacity. Uh, and then we have an example, an auxiliary branch of the state university. Uh, number two, for auxiliary of a verb, we're talking about a verb, accompanying another verb and typically expressing person, number, mood, or tense. All right, 3A, we just have the synonym supplementary. 3B, constituting a reserve, as in an auxiliary power plant. So that would be a power plant that is assisting another? Yeah. Hmm. Number four, equipped with sails and a supplementary inboard engine, as in an auxiliary sloop? Sloop. Do you know what a sloop is? Sloop. Do, do, do. Nope. Sloop. uh, What's that? Isn't there an old 50s song? Sloop John B or something like that? I don't think that's what they're talking about. I assume a sloop is a boat? Sloop is a boat. I don't know boats. Um, All right, let's look at some etymology. This is from the Latin auxiliaris, auxiliaris, uh, which means help. 
and it is akin to the Latin augere, which is a verb which means to increase, and there's more at the word eek, E-K-E. Eek. Eek. Um, all right, now we have the second form of auxiliary. Uh, I've mentioned this to other people. These words are... I didn't look ahead. I didn't pick what page that fits with you. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully you have some connection to some of these. And sometimes okay. you might not, but don't feel pressure. Oh. Uh, we're, we're, we're just hanging out. All right. So this <laughs> is the second form of auxiliary. It is a noun from 1567. Uh, 1A, an auxiliary person, group, or device. Specifically, a member of a foreign force serving a nation at war. 1B, a Roman Catholic titular bishop assisting a diocesan bishop and not having the right of succession called also auxiliary bishop do you know if, did i pronounce that word correctly diocesan diocesan i don't know but t- titular 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 is a new word to me that i recently learned and oh. i think it's fun to say it is fun to say what what like what was the context that you learned it, it it's in? something about like the titular character or the yeah the title character basically right, right. the main character yep i did not know that word until recently well, now you know but the other word was dios yeah i think it might have come up in an old uh, definition too uh where did it go Diocesan, I, I think I had trouble pronouncing like it di- before. Diocese? Like yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. D-I-O-C-E-S-A-N. Hmm. That's the best I can do. Um, all right, number two for the second form of auxiliary. An auxiliary boat or ship. Number three, an auxiliary verb. So there definitely there was definitely some relations between the first form and the second form of auxiliary. Secondary, supplemental. Stuff like that, yeah. Yeah. An auxiliary, it's, right, it's the, the backup. Yeah. You know, that's one way to it's say like it. It's like that second thumb I have. Right, exactly. Yeah. Are you a koala? Oh. Um, all right, now we have the word oxen. A-U-X-I-N. It is mm. one word. Uh, it is a noun from 1933. One, any of various usually acidic organic substances that promote cell elongation in plant shoots and usually regulate other growth processes as root initiation. As 1A, we have the synonym indoleacetic acid. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> My brain flatlined. I don't know. In- indoleacetic acid. Um, also, 1B, any of various synthetic substances resembling indoleatic acid in activity and used especially in research and agriculture. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I just read there. Uh, <laughs> that happens often. Um, all right, number two for auxin, we have the synonym plant hormone. And auxinic is an adjective. This is from the Greek auxine, which means to increase, and there's more at the word eek, E-K-E, which didn't we just have that? Yeah, auxiliary, we also had eek. more at the word eek. Uh, sorry if these words are not uh, doing it for you, but... Uh, I'm into it. I, I th- Your listeners don't know how cool it is to just watch your mustache go up and down <laughs> while you read, so it's fascinating. And uh, you know what? I almost shaved, so oh. thank God I didn't. No, I, this is good. Uh, all right, next we have oxotroph. I just love this because I'm learning all these new words uh, that I've never heard before. Do you retain them, though? No. Okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe one or two, but <laughs> in general, uh, most of them just sort of go in one ear, out the other. Auxiliary, just remember that one. I know that one. Okay, see? Uh, okay, oxotroph, A-U-X-O-T-R-O-P-H. This is a noun from 1950. An oxotrophic strain or individual. Okay, That Oh, well, here, next word is oxotrophic. That'll help us. Uh, This is an adjective from 1944. Requiring a specific growth substance beyond the minimum required for normal metabolism and reproduction by the parental or wild type strain, as in oxotrophic mutants of bacteria. Oxotrophy is a noun, and I still don't totally understand what it is. Uh, let's see. This is from Greek, oxine, to increase. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I wish I were a scientist sometimes because then I might understand these a little bit better. Maybe we I should know. ask Janet what Ooh. oxotrophic is. Yeah, to have that Latin base, too. It's helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Janet, by the way, is our aunt, and she was a science teacher for many years. Uh, so she might be able to help us out with that one. Um, all right, next we have AV, all lowercase. It is an abbreviation for one, avenue, two, 
average or three what is this word uh it looks french um a i'll spell it first a v o i r d u p o i s of voie de pois well done do i have no idea if i said that correctly i, I, I kind of want to look ahead and see if it's in the dictionary i mean it sounded quite good of what oh here we go oh because it's an aver de pois aver de pois something like that uh, I have no idea what that is, but we'll get there in about five episodes or so, <laughs> uh, in case you people are curious. Still tuning in in five right. episodes. Uh, all right, next we have AV again. It is all caps. It is an abbreviation for one, ad valorem. Hmm. Uh, number two, audiovisual. And number three, authorized version. Okay, now we have AV again, but this time there is a slash. Uh, what do you call that? A backslash or a forward slash in between the A and the V. Oh. It is an abbreviation for audio video. All right, next is avail, A-V-A-I-L. It is the first form of two. Uh, this one is a verb. Uh, by the way, the next one is a noun. But we're going to start with the verb. It is uh, from the 14th century. Intransitive definitions are first. To be of use or advantage. Synonym is serve. As in, our best efforts did not avail. Now we have the transitive hmm. definition. Uh, to produce or result in... Uh, let me try that again. To produce or result in as a benefit or advantage. Synonym is gain. As in, his efforts availed him nothing. Uh, hmm. Then we have a couple little phrases. Um, avail oneself of. Uh, or, or it could also just be avail of. And that means to make use of take advantage of. Uh, an example is they availed themselves of his services. Typically, I when I hear the word avail, I think I hear it in terms of a shorter version of the word available. Right. I was um, thinking that. But yeah, it definitely it's, is... To make oneself available. Right, exactly. Available. Sure. Um, let's see, any etymology worth saying? Uh, it is from the Latin, val, or uh, f- looks French, valois, to mm-hmm. be of worth. Uh, that is from the Latin al, uh, valere, and there's more at the word wield, W-I-E-L-D. All right, now we have the second form of avail. This is a noun from the 15th century. Advantage toward attainment of a goal or purpose. Synonym is uh, use. I think that's, or hmm. use, U, uh, U-S-E, one of those. Um, as in, effort was of little avail. That's all I got for that Oops. one. Next is availability. This is a noun from 1803. One, the quality or state of being available. Number two, an available person or thing. Which is why Spencer brought me up here. I happen to be available. You were available. You were standing around, staring off into space, not doing anything. And I said, <laughs> hey, you want to record? And you said, okay. I did. Uh, as as I've mentioned a couple episodes ago, we are here for the weekend with uh, our dad's side of the family. There's twenty, oh, over twenty of us. Over. And uh, you know, this is what we do around Christmas time. We get a house for the weekend and we just hang out and uh, read the dictionary. Read the dictionary. This is a, tr- a tradition. Um, we also <laughs> play so fun. We we play a lot of running charades. And if you people are not familiar with running charades, you should get yourself familiar right away. This is something that we stole from the TV show Mad About You. And uh, basically, it's charades, but there are two teams in different rooms, and the clue givers are in the middle, and uh, the two teams just try and get through the clues as quickly as possible, and we have an awesome time. It's and amazing. We play multiple rounds over the weekend, and uh, we've already played, geez, last night we played probably five rounds oh, or at something. Least. And that was just the first night. Yep, and there are clues ready to go. So. Yeah, there's at least three or four rounds ready to go. Okay, we're almost at the end of this episode. Oh my gosh. It, next, we have the word available. Uh, it is an adjective from the 15th century. One is archaic, having a beneficial effect. Number two, the synonym is the word valid, V-A-L-I-D. And it is used of a legal plea or charge. Number three, present or ready for immediate use, as in available resources. You do want your resources to be available. (laughs) Number four, we have a couple synonyms. 
accessible and obtainable, as in articles available in any drugstore. Articles available in any... See, some of, the, some of these examples uh, are a little weird. Like, why... Yeah, why articles? Right. Why not items or products or... Something like that. Yeah. Articles. I don't understand why they said articles. Anyway, number five, qualified or willing to do something or to assume a responsibility, as in available candidates. Number six, present in such chemical or uh, physical form as to be usable as by a plant, as in available nitrogen or available water. Availableness is a noun and availably is an adverb. Availably? Availably, yeah. Can you think of an Never. example of where you would use the word availably? Availably. I, I, I can't even think I've ever heard it used that way. I am availably available? <laughs> uh, in the last episode, we had Claire, and um, I wanted to see if I can figure... Oh, the, we had the same question. Uh, for the word autumn, we had the adverb form autumnally. Autumnally. Like what? Wh- why would? You, where Leaves would you ever use? We're falling autumnally. I think that's the exact example that she gave. Oh. I don't know if it actually makes sense, <laughs> but it works in my brain. Uh, yeah, it's a weird. There are weird words. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, we have one more. One more for word. this episode. It is the first form of the word avalanche. A v a l a n c h e. It is a noun from 1744. One, a large mass of snow, ice, earth, rock, or other material in swift motion down a mountainside or over a precipice. Number two, a sudden great or overwhelming rush or accumulation of something, as in hit by an avalanche of paperwork. (gasps) Number three, a cumulative process in which photons or accelerated charge carriers produce additional photons or charge carriers through collisions as with gas molecules. Have you ever seen video of an avalanche? A, a, mole- a molecular no, avalanche? a snow avalanche. Oh, yeah. Amazing. It's Nature is crazy. The, the fact that it's, the, it's like... I don't even know what speeds they can hit, but it's something insane, and you don't yeah, don't want to be, be anywhere nearby. And I will say that precipice may be one of my favorite words. That's a good word. I, I know you'll get to that in a few years, but <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward. Uh, if, for those who don't know, it is spelled P R E C I P I C E. I want a, a recipe to make a precipice. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I didn't warn you about this, but now I want you to pick a word of the episode. So of all the words that we said, and I can read them off to you if you want. Real quick. Uh, okay, real quick. Autonite, ox, auxiliary, oxen, oxotroph, oxotrophic, AV, 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 <laughs> avail, um, availability, available, and avalanche. Whatever criteria you want. I, I'm going to say availability because it just, that word is maybe the most available to me. It has great availability. Yes, yes. Compared to a lot of the other ones in this episode, uh, availability is much more available to my little brain. My little brain, too. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me. Do you have anything (laughs) that you want to uh, tell the people about, to plug, to Uh, whatever? I I appreciate this uh, opportunity to sit here and listen to words. I I hope that there are folks hearing Spencer's voice. It's quite a good one. I, well, if, if you're listening to this, you're definitely hearing both of our voices and uh, yeah, this was fun. I've been having a good time uh, having these guests. I, I changed up the, the method, if you don't know. Um, I had guest readers read before, and now uh, I'm doing the reading, but we, are, we have a little conversation, and I, I think it works much better. Thank way. you for having me. Thank you. Uh, I think you did a great job, and we've got a lot of pages. <laughs> I'll be back. Yes, you will be back. Uh, all right. This is, uh, what is my sign-off phrase? Thank you for joining me. And as usual, this is Spencer and Jessica reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds, and welcome to another episode of the dictionary. Uh, I am sitting here with my aunt, Janet. Aunt Janet, uh, how are you? I'm doing great, Spencer. So uh, the regular listeners from uh, the past week, uh, five days or so of uh, episodes, they've heard uh, both of your sons, Ryan and Andrew. Uh-huh. Uh, they've heard Mark. They've heard Claire. They've heard Jessica. Uh, and my dad was before that. 
Uh, so now they get to hear you. I did not want to be left out. No, we didn't want you to because uh, I think you have a special viewpoint on the world. Uh, so can you just hmm. tell us a little bit about who you are and what do we need to know about you? Sure. Well, I'm a relationship coach. I assist women who have been agonizing over whether to stay or go in their relationship. And I live in Berkeley, California. Uh, do people have, uh, is there a website that people can go to if they want there to learn more? There is, JanetParks.com. Go check it out if you feel like you feel like you connect with that in some way. Go check it out. Thank you. All right, let's talk about some words. Words. Uh, all right, our first word is the second form of avalanche. Uh, the end of the previous episode had the first form, A-V-A-L-A-N-C-H-E. It is a verb from 1855. The intransitive definition is to descend in an avalanche. Uh, not something that we want to do. Oh, no, I've seen them out west in the mountains. It's, and it's huge devastation. It's a scary sight. Yeah. Uh, so you don't want to be avalanched. Um, and then the transitive verbs uh, just has these synonyms, overwhelm and flood. Uh, all right, next we have Avalon with a capital A. It is a noun from the 13th century, a paradise to which Arthur is carried after his death. Uh, is that King Arthur, do you think? That's what it sounds like, but I never heard of this. Uh, maybe we have to do some research. I don't know much about the <laughs> King Arthur story. Uh, so, yeah, this is new to me. He pulled the sword out of the stone. It's about all but I But about know. after his death? No, never heard about that. Hmm. We'll have to look into that. Um, let's see. Okay, next we have Avant. A-V-A-N-T. It is an adjective from 1965. Culturally or stylistically advanced. Synonym is avant-garde. Uh, as in avant jazz or avant jazz. I guess if we're taking off the guard, it's just avant jazz. Uh, yeah, it's French for before. Ooh, see, you know things. You beat me to mm. it. I was just going to get into the etymology uh -huh. uh, for or front or before. Yeah, very good. Uh, all right, next we have avant garde. It is the first form. It is a noun from 1910. An intelli intelligentsia. Is that? Yeah. An intelligentsia that develops new or experimental concepts, especially in the arts. I don't think I've ever heard of intelligentsia used as a noun. I don't even really know what that is. Is oh, that yeah. a group of intelligent people? Smart people. Yeah, exactly. See, this is why I didn't know Maybe what it was because I'm not part of the group. it's kind of dropped out of use in the last few yeah. decades. I know that there's that coffee company in Chicago called intelligentsia, but I never... New, I guess I thought it was just a oh. word that they had made up. I had never... Yeah, no, it's it's the smart people. I'm not well read, uh. that is for sure. Uh, part of the reason why I'm doing this podcast. Uh, let's see, avant-gardism is a noun. Uh, all right, next we have... Oh, and avant-gardist is also a noun. Now we have the second form of avant-garde. It is an adjective from 1925 of or relating to an avant-garde, as in avant-garde writers. Um, next we have avarice. A V A R I C E. Do you have? Yes. You know what this is? Evilness. Evilness. Bad intentions. Uh, let's see. It is a noun from the 14th century. Excessive or insatiable desire for wealth or gain. Oh yeah, greedy. Yeah, the synonym is greediness and cupidity. 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 Do you know that word? No. I don't know that word. I don't know. It must that be word. similar to greed greediness. Uh, okay, so I think I've just learned the word of the thing that I dislike the most. <laughs> Avarice. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of want to forget that word, but I feel like I sh I need to remember what that is because I've never heard it. Described yeah, I like remembered that. the the kind of evil part of it and forgot that it was attached to money, but. Of mm, course. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What greed. Else? It's all yeah. about greed. Right. Uh, stuff I think about all the time. Um, where do you feel like you learned that word? In a, a, a poem or a book or is that hmm. a, a memory? I, I guess that's a weird question to ask. Where was yeah. the first time you heard this word? I don't know, but probably high school. Well, maybe I'll remember that this is the first time I was aware that I heard this word. Um, all right. We are going to move on to Avarius or Avar... Uh, no. Avaricious. Avaricious. Ooh. I thought it was various. A-V-A-R-I-C-I-O-U-S. I, I feel so stupid sometimes when I'm doing this like, because there's so many words I don't know, but... Yeah. Now that sounds like it's filled with avarice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, adjective from the 15th century. Uh, greedy, 
greedy of gain, ex excessively acquisitive, especially in seeking to hoard riches. Synonym is covetous. Uh, avariciously is an adverb, and avariciousness is a noun. I'm going to put that in my vocabulary because it sounds so much like delicious. It's oh. just like a, you know, a more sensuous sort of word for this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would feel very Avaricious. fancy if I yeah, remembered fancy. to use that word. <laughs> uh, but that might happen. Uh, all right, next we have a, uh, avas a vascular. A vascular. So it's a, a word oh. vascular. I'm familiar with that. And oh, yeah. then they Outside put of your, yeah, vascular system. Oh, and we forgot to mention that you were a science teacher. We should mention that I was a science teacher yeah. for mm, three decades, pretty close to. That's a while. Yeah, that's what, a while. What ages was it? Middle school. I've taught, well, 5 through 12, but mostly middle school, mm -hmm. physical science, and chemistry. Uh, that is an, a uh, quite an age to go through, Six, a, a, you know, 11, 12, 13. Uh, that probably was hard. And <laughs> I love that age because they're so fun. It's, and you couldn't do boring things or you would totally lose them. So right. you had to make class interesting. It's the transitional time between childhood and adulthood. And you have no idea what's happening to your Anything. life. Anything. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hormones and kicking you in. You feel like you're kind of an adult, but you're not quite there yet. And so, yeah, keeping things interesting, I think, is really yeah, good yeah. for kids. So yeah. I brought dry ice to play with and made solar cars and created inventions. And would wheel in on roller skates? Oh, uh, well, on for occasion? Halloween. Okay. Yeah, occasionally. Well, That's correct. So this <laughs> is why she is very familiar with these words that I'm not familiar with, um, like avascular. Uh, it is an adjective from circa 1900, having few or no blood vessels, Ugh. as in a vascular tissue. And a vascularity is a noun. Well. Well, now we take a little bit of a turn. We have avascular necrosis or necrosis. Ooh. Uh, not good. Uh, Death of cells. Yeah. A noun from 1953. Necrosis of bone tissue due to impaired or disrupted blood vessel as from traumatic injury or disease. I, I can't really imagine what it's like to go through that. Well, I suppose you could have just a little bit of that when you That's have true. a wound, right? Right. And some of the skin dies or, yeah, some S tissue dies and then it heals. But if you have yeah. it in a big way, that sounds bad. Yeah. yeah. So just because the word necrosis is in it doesn't necessarily mean that it it's body-wide. Yes. Uh, it can be small. Right. It right. could be in a just the cells are dying. location. Right. Which is happening all the time. Um, all right, next we have avast, A-V-A-S-T. It is a verb from 1681, a nautical command to stop or cease. You have to say avast. Yeah, I can hear pirates saying this. Oh, yes. Avast. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that yes, comes I'm, after that, yes. Right. You can hear it in that pirate voice. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, next we have... <laughs> Uh, avatar, this is a noun oh. from 1784. There's a bunch of Who definitions for thought? this one. Uh, let's see. One, the incarnation of a Hindu deity as Vishnu. Number two, A, an in incarnation in human form. Two, B, an embodiment as of a concept or philosophy, often in a person. Three, a variant phase or version in a uh, continuing basic entity. Four, an electronic image that represents and is manipulated by a computer user, as in a computer game. And I may have to belch. I do that every once in a while. Sorry, I'm human. Um, let's see. The etymology says this is from Sanskrit avatara, which means descent. Uh, from avatarati, which means he descends. And that is from um, a way, and he crosses over, and there's more at UKs. Do you know that word? Mm. U-K-A-S-E? A-S-E. No. I'm not familiar I with that. I do not. Um, and also the word through. So somehow etymologically those are related. But what I'm amazed about is how old that word is. Because we think of the modern use and the movie Avatar and it all sounds so up to date. And then you find out it's from the 1700s. Yeah. Well, uh, and that's the English version of the word. Uh, who knows how much further back it goes yeah. from that? I mean, it yeah. says it's Sanskrit. So, yeah, this is a very old idea and concept. Yeah. And, yeah, and we yeah. think of it in terms of our technology, our our little picture on our, our phone picture, or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah, that's an old word. 
Uh, all right, next we have Avant, A-V-A-U-N-T. You are my Avant Janet. Sorry, bad joke. <laughs> um, all right, this is uh, an adverb from the 15th century. We just have these synonyms away and hence, H-E-N-C-E. It is uh, Middle English, literally it means forward. Um, and there's more at uh, the word of yeah. or the prefix anti. Not Avant. in my vocabulary. No. Uh, all right, next we have AVC, all caps. This is an abbreviation for automatic volume control. Uh, I guess <laughs> that's some feature that maybe things have. They automatically change the volume. Makes sense. Oh, yeah, electronics, sound equipment. Yeah, yeah. It's, if it's too loud, you want it to be a certain level. Um, all right, next we have AVDP. Uh, all lowercase, it is an abbreviation for, and I think this is a word we had in the last episode somewhere, um, avortupois, avortupois, uh, a French word, A-V-O-I-R-D-P, uh, sorry, A-V-O-I-R-D-U-P-O-I-S. Uh, and I can't remember what that means, but we read it somewhere. No, no, yeah, I don't know. That's a fun French word. And let's see, next we have a few more. Ave, A-V-E, uh, or it could also be uh, Ave, Ave. It is the first form. It is a noun from the 13th century. One, an expression of greeting or of leave taking. Synonyms are hail and farewell. Like Ave Maria. Ah, yes, That's yes. Um, mm. I don't know the words of Ave Maria. I feel like I no, should know them. No, I don't but either. I know the tune, but no that's help. about it. Uh, I'll have to look up those lyrics now. Uh, all right, number two, it says it's often capitalized. It is the synonym Ave Maria. Um, all right, next we have Ave again. It is the second form. It is an abbreviation for avenue. I am familiar with this oh. because I grew up on an avenue, Elmwood Avenue. Yes. Uh, next we have Avelin. Avelin, A-V-E-L-L-A-N. Uh, is this something that you're no. familiar with? This I is don't an, even have a guess. Avelin. It's an adjective from 1610 uh, of a heraldic cross. So that's the that's the category we're talking about here. Uh, having the forearms shaped like conventionalized filberts. And then it says <laughs> to see the cross illustration. So I guess there's a bunch of different kinds of crosses, and we'll see what they look like at a later date. A velin. Uh, this is from um, Feminine of Albelanus. I don't think I said that right. Of Abella. Uh, ancient town in Italy. That's where it's from. Uh-huh. And I think we'll do one more for this episode. Right. It is Ave Maria. We've already spoken about her a little bit, or that phrase. Uh, capital A, capital M. It is a noun from the 13th century, and the synonym uh, is Hail Mary, the first definition of Hail Mary. I f- oh, yeah. I feel like I have so yeah. much to learn because I don't know anything about the song or religion. That's just where I'm coming at this from. Yeah. Do you yeah. know? No? No, I don't. I don't. I'm glad I'm not alone. I think... <laughs> They sing it in Latin. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But soon in your next episode, you're going to get to aviaries, which is about birds. A- and oh, so like aviary, sounds, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those will come up soon. Yes, sure. that will be interesting because I'm sure there were, um, yeah, I love I love birds. Just, yes. Though, yeah, we're definitely coming up close to that. We just finished the auto uh, prefix, A-U-T-O. So there were there was a whole, okay. like, a page, yes. whole page's worth, four episodes maybe of auto words. And uh, we finally just finished that. <laughs> uh, so that was a wormhole we went down. Um, I didn't tell you this, but you now have to pick a word of the episode. So of the ones that we read, and there were a bunch of them, uh, what's your favorite? Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Um, I'm going to have to pick a recent one because I'll forget. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's just, I think Ave Maria. Now I have sure. to look up uh, the one, the song that we hear. Yeah. Is yeah. that well, really in Latin or am I making that up? Yeah. Uh, there's probably both versions, <laughs> English and Latin. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I want to know what they what the lyrics are. Uh, so that's it. Thank you for joining me, Janet. Thank you for joining me. Uh, audience, thank you for joining us and listening to us babble on about some words. Thank and, you, uh, Spencer. You're amazing awesome. at how you do interesting things in the world. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants, and, but I'm having a good time. So. That's what counts. Yes. Uh, all right. Thank you. And until next time, this is Spencer and Janet reading the dictionary. Goodbye. <laughs>